first thing that I want to bring up to you, because this is the one that I got the, 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 the reaction that I was not really uh, expecting to get from you, which was when I came across Frog, your short film. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> you had said, uh, you said in the message, uh, you know, how the fuck you came across that, I'll never know. And I was like, well, yeah, I, came across it on, I came across it on YouTube. Uh, so, because here's the thing, I looked up your, I was putting in Tom Hallam interview, anything of that sort. It was nothing right. but your films. And then I came across that short film. Yeah. So I was starting to become a fan of you from watching Brett's film. Like I really was becoming a, like a, a fan of what you were doing. That's cool. That Hell short yeah. film really made like solidify. Okay. I am a fan. Like that is it. Yeah. So, Let's go. Yeah. Tell me more, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that performance won me over because there was the things that I've noticed before that you were able to pull off in Brett's movies. But for some reason in this particular short, I, I felt like that was possibly one of your best performances I've seen, uh, maybe outside of Rodeo Thief and possibly Copper Bill. So Damn, you watched them all, huh? So I when them. I came across that short movie, um, I was starting to, uh, I was starting to wonder, like, what, what is it? Why, like, why haven't really gotten to that? I want to say like superstar sets, but just more awareness as far as okay. So outside of Brett's film. You know, I, I would imagine that with the real you have, you clearly showcase a lot of strengths as far as you being a, a really good actor, but also being a really good uh, leading man as well, too, that I was actually kind of surprised that I haven't seen a lot of that going on here. I know that you were you were initially offered for the part of Buckskin, but you couldn't do it because you had got offered Fear the Walking Dead. And then you were kind of conflicted right. on taking yeah. on one or the yeah. other. And then Brett said, just take on Fear the Walking Dead. We'll take care of Buckskin ourselves. And then obviously it turned right. out with... Uh, uh, Zembrot taking over. Oh, Zembrot, yeah. Yeah, so... You know uh, Zembrot, too? I'm supposed to be talking with him. I'm hoping yeah. this week. So yeah. we'll, we'll, I'm waiting to see how that turns out. So, you know, crazy. basically... Yeah, so basically, there's a lot that I've come across with you that I've started to notice about how I, I feel like you have, for me, all the qualities of making a really good leading man. Uh, and not necessarily just... I'm not talking about superstar status. I'm not... That's not what really interests me. It's really more about the the awareness that I think what you've been able to pull off here, I'm hoping that more people will catch on to, to really, you know, give you more opportunities to try other things outside of what we've, I've come across with you in the, in the last couple of films that I've seen uh, really yeah. in the last week yeah. and a half, I would say. So for, for, for you getting into the business now, um, you know, I'm, I'm, always, I'm always curious to ask this question with everybody because I think every answer might be different. But when yeah. you started getting into acting, was it really just more about the, the love for the craft or were you, or did you have some sort of preconceived notion about wanting to be an actor for the glamour, if you will? Well, it was more, I, I loved, I loved being an actor as, you know, I love movies. I've always grown up, you know, that's, that's, that's been my life, that in sports, but it came to the point, you know, I was like, well, what the, what the fuck am I going to do, man? Like, you know, yeah. I didn't go to school, you know, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't learn a trade like my dad wanted me to, you know, yeah. and, I was like, you know, it's just, I, you know, I, gotta, I can make some money at this, I think. So it was just more of like uh, past love for it. And then just, you know, I knew I could do it. I knew I could be good at it. Right. I knew I could make luck, you know, and still get to love to what I do, you know, so it wasn't really working. What did you, did you take any like uh, acting classes prior to that? Or it was just kind of like you just oh, arrived doing the spot uh, as you were getting I, to work? I, man, I, I don't knock acting classes. I, I, I mean, <laughs> they help a lot of people. It right. just, it could not, it, it could not be the worst thing for me. Why that? You Why know? is that? It, 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 I don't know. I mean, maybe it goes back to me being, um, you know, probably a, a bad student, a poor student in school. Mm. Cause I wasn't interested. I don't, I didn't like, I didn't like the class setting. I didn't like the clicks. I didn't like the material that they were, what we were reading. And like what material really, was given to you like that you weren't the, liking? You know, it was just shit that you see, you might see like in a high school play or something like that. You know, just like, mm. you know, they don't know if you have any talent or not. You know, they're just figuring out from the get go. So, you know, the material is not really that good. And, you know, I was, you know, and I was booking stuff. You know, I was, you know, at least I was booking commercials or small, small roles and other things. Mm. This was before Brett really discovered me and we kind of hit off, hit it off. And, you know, everything went from there. This was more this when I was very first starting out. And uh, I just got lucky that my agents throughout the whole time have not really, you know, it's not, hadn't been a make it or break it thing uh, for mm. me to take classes. So know? the stuff that you were, uh, that you were getting as far as the commercial views were concerned, were they just like whatever's available or were they looking for a certain type that you probably fit uh, with what the uh, commercial required? 
Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, what you just said. Yeah, I mean, you fit a certain type. Yeah, it was. It wasn't like there weren't cattle calls. It was like you know, I was going out for specific roles, yada yada, and it paid well, you know. And I remember I was getting my first uh, big paying gig. I was like, oh shit, this is how it is now. Mm -hmm. I can quit my job. You know, it's gonna last forever. <laughs> Holy right, shit, right. that only lasted like six months, and I was out on my ass again. I had to go back yeah. to you know back to work, you know, bartending. Or so whatever. when you when you were doing that though, like, so you get into the 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 you know, the big, that role that you thought that was going to kind of help carry over for the next set of years. Like, did yeah. you, was, was it, were you really not working for that long, for that length of time for six months because that money lasted you that long? Or is it just because you thought that I, you, I mean, you would be able to book the next gig based off that one work that you were just book the next gig. Yeah. Just kind of book the next gig. You know, it wasn't like, I mean, I was still doing other commercial work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be one of the jobs I had. Oh, so I, I thought, you know, hey, I, this is this is easy. I'm just going to be a full time actor. But that's not that's everybody knows that's not the case, bro. You know, <laughs> so, so so then explain to me about how you started getting into, uh, you know, because I know Brett had shared a story. I think it was uh, your your audition for, I think, 90 feet, if I'm not mistaken, or yeah. was it right before that? I can't remember which one was. I have to remember. But uh, I think it was the only one I auditioned for. OK, so you so you auditioned for that. He loved you uh, in, in that audition. And you pretty much got the role. And then you went as far as, if I remember correctly, from one interview that I did come across that you ended up losing weight because you felt the, co you know, cops were more leaner that you've come across uh, for that role. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So you like, you've, come across, you've seen street cops or something like that. Right. They're leaning me. I'm not, I'm not calling them skull crackers. I'm not, but you know what I mean? You know, they, look, <laughs> they look like they work out all the time. Like, right, right. They eat well, you know. And uh, that's the that's the look I wanted to go for because I when I auditioned for it, I mean I was like thirty pounds heavier, had longer hair, and it yeah. was just I didn't look like a cop to me. Thank God they were you know they had really no choice. They didn't know I was going to show up like that and shit. I showed up and they were, they kind of had these looks on their faces of like, uh, this isn't the guy we hired, but he does look like our friend who's a cop. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So were they really hesitant at first? I've seen you on set the first time in in the uh, prepare for the role, or is it something that you didn't let them know ahead of time? I didn't, I didn't let him know. No, I just was showing up how I, how I thought it was going to look. But, yeah, but they, mean, they ended up liking what they saw once, once you showed up on set though, right? When I showed up on set, I mean, we, we had no choice. I, I drove up and we had to shoot a scene in like an hour. So, I mean, they were, I mean, they were down with it. They were happy with it. Brett thought I got too skinny and, and I agree, you know, it was a little overboard, yeah. which kind of happens when you start doing shit like that. Yeah. You know, you, you skinny, you never get skinny enough. The next thing you know, you kind of look weird on camera or you look like you're sick. Would you do that again if you if you had to go back and do and do it all over? Oh yeah, I'd do whatever the hell it takes. Yeah, yeah, really? I love work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If I had to, I mean, I mean, there's Chris, there's you got Christian Bell for that. You got these other hard asses, you know, that mm -hmm. have already, you know, it wouldn't be like a pissing contest. It would be like, oh, that's what they want for the job. Well, yeah, I'll do whatever, you know. Yeah. So would you? So do you do you really consider yourself as being like a risk taker for someone that would do whatever's required for the role, or do you have boundaries as far as how far you're willing to go for the role? Oh, within good taste. I mean, I mean, within uh, something reasonable, you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not out to like shock and disturb anybody, man. You know, okay. I'm, I'm getting in my forties. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to prove anything. If I get typecast as like some kind of Southern, you know, no nonsense dude or whatever, whatever the fuck it is I'm playing, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, it wouldn't bother me that much. Yeah. Really? So you'd be okay with it, oh, you being yeah. typecast like as someone of that sort? If I got typecast, yeah, I mean, to me, it's not the kiss of death. That people make it seem it is, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Especially uh, because you're hired. Like, I mean, the goal of an actor, I feel, would be like, you know, work as long as you possibly can. You know right. what I mean? So, Interesting. so yeah, I have so, no qualms about that. So, working with uh, with Brett, though, I, I imagine that because uh, I've seen your 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 variety of roles with him, um, you you really got to stretch out your acting muscles when it comes to the different type of roles you're offered. Obviously, 90 feet being kind of your more your more unique part that you've that was that you've started off with and then everything else is pretty much more like you know a loner type character um you know someone that's going through some sort of a sh personal struggle of themselves and having to overcome that in some way or shape yeah. or form so you've had like a different uh, levels of like you know of, of character arcs that these the films require for you to go through and then you know i i like i said before I've, that's where i started becoming more of a fan of your work and then it, it wasn't until like i said before frog when it came across that movie where i for me I think really showed like the more subtleties that I've, that I've noticed before, but really was just condensed in that one shot. And when that, when that one short film. So I'm curious about that movie because um, I'm actually surprised that hasn't gotten any traction because that was actually a very, very good film. Like I really, I, and, and this is no joke. I hope you don't think I'm making this up, but 
I've literally no, no, watched no. that short film like over 15 times because I love <laughs> everything. I'm not joking. I, there was a lot that no I loved shit. about that short film. Yeah, seriously. So, you know, just from the from the start of, you know, the of you meeting up with your girlfriend, um, Marie, I think it was, and then um, the no, narration, the music, and then, of course, yeah. you know, landing on the sleeping on the train tracks. For those that don't know, your, your character's probably was trying to kill themselves because you weren't happy with the fact that you're not able to follow your dreams. But the love of your right. life is also not want to be a part of that as well, too, because yeah. she wanted you to follow a, a standard goal of just getting a job that pays well and leave your life. You didn't want that. But you seemed like you were unwilling to uh to to fall into that that trap therefore you were willing to take yourself out of the equation but then you happen to fall asleep on the one day the train doesn't run through a bunch of kids which yeah. i think is a, a obvious an obvious rip, uh, reference to uh stand by me and they pretty much broke the news to you and that's where your reaction came out to where you were obviously yeah. very surprised and kind of emotional and, and it's, it's, it was hard to tell if you were crying laughing which was the, the beautiful thing i loved about that sh that moment of the film yeah. um and then your reaction when you're still that's stumbling cool. so there's a lot of <laughs> details that I picked up on that I, I seriously, seriously love. And then, of course, the song at the end, just like, you know, I, I've never cried uh, to the show, but I came really close to doing so because it really was that effect. Oh, because there's a lot of like things that I connected with, not to that extent, but just, you know, other things that your character was going through that I truly, truly connected with. And I thought, this is amazing. Why hasn't anyone gone out of the way to really promote this and uh, showcase yeah. what you can do, what the director could have done? Uh, has done, I meant to say among many other things too because it's beautifully shot well edited well directed um the the, the sound the sound uh, um editing was phenomenal too so there's a lot going for that movie that i'm surprised like i said before it hasn't gained any traction but for you uh what was that uh, how would you how did you get into that role and secondly what was that experience like for shooting that role uh because well um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay, pretty much it. I was going to say because I loved it. So that's all I was going to say. Oh, no, uh, my friend Patricia Eakin, who directed, uh, yeah. who wrote and directed this, um, the short, this is just part of a, a feature that she's trying to make. So this, this is just one part of like a bigger story that Patricia has written, which mm, I think okay. is phenomenal. You know, and it's, and I know she's still trying to work hard. I need to get in touch with her, but she's, uh, she's still trying to work hard to get this like built into a feature and have Frog, my, my character, be one of the main characters in this broader spectrum of a storyline mm -hmm. which is pretty goddamn fascinating um yeah, i think so too. and so she was she was a mutual friend uh our, our her husband worked with me she had heard that i wanted to be an actor and so she just stuck by me and then when the time was right when she could um, put her shit together and get a you know get a short film made she hit me up and i was more than happy to do it and, you know she paid well and said I'd do it for free she was like no you're never gonna do it for free but I was like this is great I mean so I don't know I mean and then the rest was history we went up to Liberty Hill shot it like I think one one or two days maybe just one day and that night know, too one, one in the night yeah that's what I'm saying it was like one I want to say that or maybe we went back up there back to back days so it wasn't that like was a straight, really a straight, straight shot from like day till night it wasn't like that for you guys yeah. was it right exactly oh, okay so like yeah, we know we went the whole way through. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so, you know, awesome. that's so, crazy. So tell me about that that shooting schedule for you guys on that one, because, um, you know, when it comes to like short films, it could be, uh, from my experience, uh, hearing stories and in, in the very, very little that I've done, it's a very, very daunting task. And, uh, you know, for, for someone who you know, uses, because I know a lot of people tend to use short films as a way to kind of add to the resume, but also to showcase, hey, this is a potential project we want to work on. So this is the the preview side of it. Imagine what we can do if we expand the story. So I know that's what you're, that's what uh, Patricia was trying to do here. But, um, you know, when you, when you were shooting it, did you feel like anything? Did you, did you have like a, a feeling of like, you know, what, this actually may be really, really good. And I'm really hoping to gain some traction. Or were you just oh, fuck, yeah. walking at confidence to say, oh, it's going to be good. And then you kind of went off with your day. No, no, no. It, it hit a lot of, it, it hit a lot of, um, hit a lot of points for me in my life. I was going through, you know, I was going through a bad breakup and, um, mm. I related a lot to like this character and I always believed in Patricia. I, I knew she had an eye for something and no. So it was like, uh, it was almost like a little bit of therapy, you know, to, uh, go out on set all day, play this character It's kind of let me release some of the stuff. Maybe I couldn't release in my real life, mm. you know? not given the opportunity or you know the timing or someone even wanted to fucking hear it you know so was it therapeutic for you too to some extent oh 100 yeah a lot so of my it, shit is most so, of my stuff is 
So did so did that actually help you in some way or shape or form to have to deal with the the, the hurdles that you were having to overcome for yourself, or was it, was it just like kind of a stepping stone to eventually figure it out as you know as you went on with your life? Yeah, it was just like you know you get moments of release of you know have you know stuff you can't really express in real life. You, you know let it out here and you know does it help? I don't know. Does it okay. does it change anything? I don't know. But that's an honest answer. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. like that answer. Yeah. Well, so, but what ended up happening with the movie though? So, did it get uh, like a, a a a festival run of some sort? Because I mean, uh, the short I, film Frog. Yeah, um, I think she took it down to the Oaxaca Film Festival. Okay, but I haven't heard anything. I've but I haven't been in touch. I've been kind of off the radar with everybody for a while, so I haven't been in touch with her to see if she's done anything else with it. I ran to her husband the other day, so he she, he said that she wants to do some other projects. Mm. Hopefully, it continues with this, but we might do something completely different. Okay, she's well, got the. This- She's got the ears. She's been right. Yeah, well, I hope she does go follow with that one because that the way that this was oh, yeah. had turned out, like I really love, and I really do hope that if it does come to fruition, that you're back on uh, to taking on this role because, um, like I said, like that performance, like really, really made me a fan of you, um, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with uh, you know help her guide into the, the the process, of course, but. Yeah, man, I was like, you. I'm, I'm not making this up. I love, love that show. That's actually one of my new favorite films I've come across. Well, this is gonna get a kick out of this, man. You yeah, need well, to talk to her. Then. Well, I, I tagged her because I, um, because I was trying to find because you have your social media accounts on Twitter. Um, so I actually tagged yeah. you, and I also tagged her as well, which I hope I tagged the right because I made sure I looked at the pictures to make sure it's the right person, and I, and I believe I got the right one. So I'm hoping that she saw it because I, and I was trying to to do my absolute best to bring awareness to it because I really love that movie. Um, well, I can, uh, I can get in touch with her and uh, I can link you guys up at a different time. If you're, if you're down for that, to talk to absolutely. her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love to do that yeah. to help promote that movie. That's that. a, it's a great, great opportunity for me yeah. to speak, speak with her. Um, so, so let's move on to uh, your, mm-hmm. your, yourself, as far as your, you know, your background is concerned, because you born and raised in Texas, I imagine. Is that right? Uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Okay, so and you still live out there, or you live out in the Dallas area now? I live in I live in Austin. You live in Austin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're on the east side. Austin. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I love it. So, you know, growing growing up in in Texas, you want to be an actor too. Um, have most of your work as a, in the last couple of years all be all staying within the state, or are you? Because I know you work with the Walking Fear of the Walking Dead, which I think is shot in Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? I think they're moving to Georgia next season, but they're, okay. they're still here right now. I mean, okay. they might have shut down production already. I don't know. That was just like a small day role, you know, yeah. to, you know, you never know what you're going to get with them because they have to, you know, you're signing, you know, NDA, NDA after NDA. Yeah. And um, so they're like, hey, this this character could go on or this character, you know, could be Ixnade. And I was just one of the Ixnade. But I mean, it was, it was always fun to get on a well-oiled machine like that and you see how just dozens and dozens of people are working, you know, just lots, so many moving parts, a lot of money, but yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say, I'm sure you got yeah, that, that, that isn't cheap. Yeah. <laughs> so two, two other films I came across and believe it or not, this, you know, what? the very first film I saw you in, but I had no idea you were in, um, was a movie Yellow Rose. And oh, shit. Yeah. so I bought that movie when it had come out on DVD, but again, I had no idea who you were. This was well before I, I knew who Brett was and in it. So yeah. I saw the movie and I love the film. So when I, you know, when we got and we had all this set up for us to, to speak, I, I continued looking to your background as far as your filmography is concerned. And I saw Yellow Rose and I saw that you play the character Mark. I was like, who the hell is Mark? I, I saw them. I only saw it once and I own it too. And I thought like, I've, I don't remember the guy named Mark. And I, and I swear, I seriously thought that maybe you were one of the ICE agents, you know, considering yeah. what I saw from, from oh, uh, yeah, Brett's movie. Yeah, that's I figured I would get cast as. So, yeah. so when I yeah. saw the movie, I was like, that's not him. That's not him. And then you play, ended up playing the, uh, the husband to the main character's uh, aunt. And yeah. I, you, you were in the movie, but I barely saw you. It was quite literally like, oh, just yeah, it was just point. yeah, they really, we shot a lot more than they showed, which happens a lot. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of times you'll shoot, you know, you'll shoot quite a bit of stuff and, you know, you're in it for like that. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, you, the role that you had there, like I said, I it's it, it was a role that I was kind of I was really surprised that we didn't actually get to see a lot of it because again I've only saw it once, loved what I saw, then hadn't gone back to watch it up until I came across your filmography. And then when I went back to watch, I was like, I'm not, and I'm not, when I say this, I always try to be cognizant. I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not implying that I'm insane to tell the director you should have had done this. That's not what I'm doing, but right. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of your character to really have, have like a more to have face behind the voice, if you will. 
to really right. see like you know their perspective and i understand why what the perspective was behind your 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 character there but um yeah but once they moved through rather quick and i was like yeah i actually kind of wish that was expanded a little bit more because i would have liked to have seen his side of the story whether it be for a minute or two but really just to get that yeah that side of the character we, we shot, yeah we shot quite a bit of stuff and it was uh it was so interesting and watching the final product i mean even though they cut most of my stuff out i mean that's fine that's what happens but yeah. it was such a beautiful movie like i yeah. was really surprised when i saw it i, I really enjoyed it what what I was it that they left out? out huh what was it that they left oh, out? oh you? you know just uh, in the scenes with me and the aunt in a bedroom talking about the girl kind of like yeah. the voiceover script that you hear but yeah, yeah. more like cameras on the stress on the fights there was like a scene in the kitchen where we're trying to all coexist and you know i'm just mm. i'm that asshole you know then the in the in the scene that uh, you know it's just like so uncomfortable with everything to, interesting. You know. interesting yeah yeah I'm so little, I mean, how I'm long were you awful. shooting there for then oh i was just i just came in for a day you know oh really okay had, i was just in in and out one day one full day you know a 12 hour day yeah so and then this leads me to another film that i saw actually last night <laughs> and this was the movie um sister amy where you play a character by the name of oh Pilar. shit yeah yeah so and then you play yeah. one of the more or less i guess you can consider yourself as being one of the bandits if you will um yeah very Murder very minor role yeah yeah one a very yeah. minor role i think he barely said a line or two if i'm not mistaken yeah um but the film was actually really good i actually liked the movie uh, i'm yeah. not sure if you saw the, the film yourself um yeah i did yeah yeah very yeah, well just... done movie um yeah. but yeah you happen to be in really good projects at, when you if, if you're not working with brett but when you're in the projects that you know thankfully the films are really good but you're only in it for a minuscule part so yeah. and again this is the part where i was trying to come say it before because when i seeing what you've done with brett's film and then watching what you've done outside of you know frog and then seeing yellow rose and then of course um sister amy like you know to me i felt like there's there's so much more you can offer and i'm sure the directors noticed that too obviously they wouldn't have hired you but you know i always yeah. feel like that that would be kind of like the platform for you to be able to expand on something else outside of what you've been able to work with brett here but you know right. I, I have have you gotten more opportunities as a result of your work with brett where you know you people have taken notice or agency or, or, or casting directors and taking notice of you say, you know what, we like what you did with this movie. Uh, come on for this part here. Like, is it a little bit of that yeah. going on well, for you? I mean, not, not, not that, not that uh, wonderful of like, Hey, we love you in this, so be in this, but uh, yeah, they, I mean, Brett's given me a great uh, jumping, you know, off point, you know, yeah. And, uh, yeah. A lot of people take notice. A lot of casting directors will take notice, like who's working, you know, who's steady working, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, they can look at this fucker, Hallam, who's like, Oh, oh, he's working. He's still working. He's always working. Well, if he's working, let's bring him in and see what he's, you know, what it's all about, you know? So I've been reading a lot. I've been reading a lot more than I've ever have in my past for bigger stuff. So, so more yeah, auditions you're getting offered for more auditions. Just off, probably just off the activity from, you know, working on with a B 22 mm -hmm. and, um, and also just the growing market in Austin, you know, I mean, a lot of shit's coming here. So I don't know. I mean, just so, back and just the grind. Do you feel like that that Texas, or at least well, Texas in general for you? Do you feel like that the film community is starting to grow more and more at, with the potential uh, opportunities for you to be able to, you know, get more gigs outside of B twenty two films, but to really get more gigs as yeah. far as like, you know, film productions are concerned, television, and because you obviously work Fear yeah. the Walking Dead, but you know, having that opportunity to see that things are starting to move along a little bit forward, you, are you having confidence that? those opportunities are going to start to come more and more uh, arriving in Texas uh, for, for you to be able to get yeah. more work in the state. I mean, that's, that's the lottery. That's the scratch offs that we, <laughs> we buy and play, man. You know, it's, it, we hope so, you know, it could all change tomorrow. Everybody could leave town next season. You know, I mean, no one knows. Yeah. It's true. You know? And if they leave then you know, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be with my agency. That's, you know, it's pretty dug in in Austin and in the region. So Okay. He, he, he does it for me, you know, but I mean, there's a hundred no's for every yes you get. Like not many people are lucky enough to have, you know, to meet like a Brett Bittman who like, let me do whatever I want because he has trust in me, you know, mm -hmm. we work so well together and that I just can't continuously work. So no one really, you know, gets to have that. True. And, and I think that, yeah, I th that right there is already a victory. Right. And, and that's the thing too. I, I've noticed with, uh, with Brett's movies that uh, what, what, what the work that you guys have done together, what you guys really do, you know, to me, it looks like Brett is giving you a chance to just, you know, get your feet wet in different roles uh, with what you've been able to yeah. pull off here with obviously Rodeo Thief, um, 90 Feet from Home, and of course, uh, Copper Bill. 
and a bunch of other stuff that you've, that you've worked with him on as well. And one, one role that I actually really liked a lot that you were in uh, was Meteor. So when I saw your oh, yeah. role, so, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, I liked that. I actually did like that movie, but yeah, when so I saw fun. When I saw your role in that film, I was thinking like, man, can you imagine if they centered a character around that guy and, you know, make him like the anti-hero? Like that's, that's one of the yeah. things that crossed my mind. And I'm not sure if, you know, if, if Brad had ever come to you and say, Hey, we love what you've done in that role, but we got an idea for something like yeah. that. But, you know, oh, yeah, he content. definitely wants to, yeah, he definitely wants to like delve into the, the backstory of Zephyr, you know, the, the murderous cannibal or, you know, whatever the thug he was, <laughs> that was so much fun playing that role. Because yeah, he never, you know, I'd always, I'd always have to play like, you know, the usually like the good guy, right? In a lot of the Bentman movies, so he did me a favor on this one and let me be the bad guy. So I noticed the tattoo on on the neck here as well yeah. for the character. So was that something that, yeah. um, I mean, how did that work? Because I know you guys ran on a tight schedule. So was that easy to apply on you to get to get ready for, for oh, shooting? It didn't take too long. Um, Katie, Katie Parker she uh she was like i have i have some tattoos pick which one you like and she flipped the second one i was like that fucking tattoo that one <laughs> that skull whatever that was yeah yeah yeah. So it didn't take her too long to do it she did a great job it lasted pretty much she didn't i don't think she had to do it again like it lasted the whole shoot you know it was, oh, nice. really? it was just like temporary whatever bullshit you know the makeup artists do these days you know it <laughs> right, just right, works right. like yeah but it was literally the second tattoo i think we saw i was like that's perfect really so how long do you guys take to, to shoot that film Oh man, not that long. I want to say, I don't quote me on it. Maybe ten days, maybe. So maybe, that maybe entire I think it was eight days altogether, seven or eight days. That's so, most of Brett's stuff. Right, right. Yeah, like, we we had a discussion about that. Busy. Like so, so such a tight schedule. Yeah. Do you, you like working like that? Uh, working that tight schedule, or do you prefer a little oh, more yeah. time to expand? No, no, I like the tight schedule. I like jumping. I like running and gunning. I don't like to sit and uh, marinate on what I'm going to do or what the character is going to do or even talk too much about the character itself at all. I just kind of like sticking to the truth on the page and then wham, bam, let's go. And Brett is one of the fastest, the fastest I've ever worked with, honestly. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if um, what would be great if, if he got like a huge budget. He'd probably still try to shoot it in that amount of time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Oh, he's amazing. So, so let me ask you then. So, if if you were given the opportunity to really work on a, a larger project where you have all the time in the world for you to really develop what it is required for you, whether it be getting into shape or what, or getting some sort of physical, yeah. uh, getting a physical condition for whatever role you're taking on, learning on the lines and so on and so forth, you, you don't you don't think that will help you in you know, really trying to get yourself uh, into the, the, to, to prepare for the role, or you just really like just to come on in, boom, 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 and get out. I mean, I know you mentioned, you answered well, my question, um, but, but I, having no, the time do, to do I that. Do, I do, I do do homework. Yeah. hundred percent. I do homework from the first time I read the script. I immediately start, you know, just piece by piece, putting it in and what I'm going to bring to it. You know what I mean? Like, um, mm. and then Weeks will go by. Maybe I won't look at the lines at all for a week or two and then come back to it and just have all these different thoughts. You know, you never get married. I never get married to a certain mindset or like way I'm going to go with it, the whole thing, because Brett switches it up so much on set that honestly, we, you could you could be going over pages of lines and he'll come up and he'll be like, we're, we're going to switch all this right now. We're going to change all this. We're going this way. And you just got to be, be able to like bounce around with it. And I kind of got, I kind of stole that from Kevin Klein, you know, the famous actor. I yeah, saw I him on some interview. He was like, I never, I never memorize my lines. You know, I always come in and like, kind of like keep it fresh. Like the day of, like, I mean, don't come in completely fucking blind, like a fucking, you know, crazy right, person. Right. But, you know, you come in and just have a fresh take at it instead of, because I've seen so many times actors, something goes wrong in a scene. They don't, they can't adjust because they've envisioned it so much this way that if something happens that's different a lot mm, of actors i see what you're saying how to react to like kind of let it go you know it happens you know I've, I've been guilty of it before yeah i've never actually heard of that perspective but i think you actually uh educated me on something here so I you know, know it's smart <laughs> what it seems to work though because you done very well with the with the parts you were given but so but you know so let me ask you this here and i hope when, when i'm asking you you don't mind uh, where I'm going with this here, but understand is I'm not asking for any gossip, but when you're, when you're working on major sets, you know, uh, you know, for established productions, um, is, I know, I know you notice there's a night and day difference in terms of the work 
that's involved with you know a bigger production or an, you know a, a, a much high, high uh, I wouldn't say high quality but a higher production in terms of like um, th- that would have some cloud over them and then you work on where with Brett and, and some other independent production for you uh, do you prefer the indie side of how things are working how things are put together or do you do you like some of the more of the uh, the Hollywood production that you notice that may that you could probably take a bit of piece of uh, learn from and then infuse into what you are working with with your independent productions like do you have a preference of which one you prefer Hollywood as opposed to independent films um I love the independent films man but there's nothing like a, that well-oiled machine of you know like productions that are on point you know and like they have the money to do shit exactly right and there's no cutting corners they don't have to you know what I mean like if they want it, they're paying for it. And it's going to happen. You know, they surround themselves with people that make sure that happens. You know, that goes from like, you know, the top to like down to the actors to whomever else works. You know what I mean? Any kind of like you know, low level anything. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, it's all it's always nice to have that. But I mean, the reality is it's going to be more independent, probably, you know, anyway, which I mean, then again, I'm just like looking to a crystal ball. I don't know, man. Who knows? I could get cast on something big next year. And next thing you know, I'm going to be like, like Rob, who? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? But so you don't know. All right. I, well, I like either way. I mean, I have, I have, I definitely have more fun on set with Brett and doing yeah. that indie thing. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so going back to your background here then so when you first started getting into acting and you started booking some roles i mean you mentioned before that you know you weren't doing too well in school and that you were um you, you know you, it seemed like you struggled in some certain areas as far as like well i wouldn't say a struggle but you didn't necessarily like structure you don't like authorities what it looks like to me it's what it sounds like to me is that fair to say yeah i just had no interest in anything that i yeah i had, I had no interest in anything did it if somebody didn't interest me that i didn't love i i just i you know, they thought I was autistic, you know, when I was younger, you know, I'd go to all these, these tests, do all these tests that I didn't know about until later. And yeah, they thought I was autistic because I could rattle off any stat in baseball, you know, from any player, but I couldn't pass any of my classes, you know, I, right. I wasn't being taught baseball, you know, so that's interesting. That's, so, yeah. so when you started getting into acting um, and then you started booking some roles, uh, was that, I mean, I know you said you, you wanted to get into it, but when, once you started going through that whole process, did that really solidify like, yo, this is it, this is what I really want to do now that I've, now that I'm into the, uh, uh, now, that, now that I've got my feet wet here, like I, this is what I want to do. Is that kind of where it all more or less started to be, uh, becomes, uh, it, you, yeah, no, was, what your path would you want to take? No, it was more like, uh, this was, this is what I was going to do. Like, there was no, there was no okay. like, oh, this, I, think it, I think this is okay now. It was like this, I got no fucking choice. It's either be this or I'm going to be a bum on the street. I don't know what it's going to be. Mm. And so far I'm still not on the street. So, but <laughs> so no, I mean, I had this condition a long time ago. I was, okay. but you know, I wasted a lot of my life, you know, through just, you know, bullshitting, wasting time, being younger, yada, yada. And, um, but when it came down to brass tacks, I was like, oh, I got to start doing it at some point. So once I started, I was like, you know, there's no turning back. Yeah, you know, I knew that from the get go. So for you uh, now, being being in industry for for a number of years now, um, has anything changed for you as far as your perception of how you view the business or how you view the acting, uh, you know, preparation and whatnot? Like, has anything changed along the way for you that you may have taken for granted before or didn't know about before that now you are including as as far as your 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 awareness of what to be looking out for and with the next set of projects or the upcoming projects you've already got uh, coming down the pipeline for you. Like, is there something that's changed for you along the way for that? Um, just some more of appreciation for it, more appreciation okay. for other people's talents that come in like, so, you know, so easy to be like, Oh, all about me. But you know, when you really work with somebody who's good and you see, you know, even if they fall flat on their fucking face or if they, you know, if they kill the scene, just like that whole participation in the whole thing, just, I just have such an appreciation for them. You know, it's, and I, so I'll take it for granted sometimes. And I'm just like, whoa, wake the fuck up. You know, you have uh, like the best, man. you have the best life. You get to do what you want and you get to do this. So, you know, I talked to Brett uh, l- last week when I, when I talked to him, I was asking about, you know, what, you know, what, what, the, what his uh, relationship is like when it comes to the filmmaking um, you know, process. He, and t- he told me it's more like a love hate relationship when it comes to making movies. There are some days where it's really stressful and, yeah. you know, and it can be very, um, it can be a very grinding process. 
Um, do you feel that way too? Because I mean, you mentioned before that you guys get along great. So obviously, because the fact, here's the thing I, I told Brett before that the fact that you are coming back to work with him, that's obviously a very good sign that you guys are clicking and you guys are working very well oh, yeah, together. Yeah. But going through the motions with him and seeing what he's going through and going what you're going through, did you do you also have that kind of, do you feel a little bit of what he feels too as far as the level? Like, of have bad days. Or like, well, he has a lot more responsibility on the yeah, whole yeah. thing. Right. I have the easy job. My part is so, you know what I mean? I just okay. show up it's on the fucking page. So every day is a good day for me. But when I see him having bad days of like having to deal with whatever bullshit's being thrown at him, uh, I felt like I feel bad for my friend. I don't know, but I'm also like, thank God I'm just the fucking, <laughs> you know? Right, right. But yeah, man, he handles it with grace and he's, and he's so easy to work with, I think. I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know if we just, uh, you know, right. it was love at first sight or whatever it was, but <laughs> You know, we work so well together. <laughs> right. Well, so do you feel like you're going to ever get a uh, step out of your comfort zone you as far as acting center, considering what you yeah. have been working on with uh, Brett seeing what he's done? And, and yeah. Tom uh, Z- Zimbrod is like, is a guy that I was not aware of uh, that he does other things outside of acting as far as ton- stunt coordinating, fight coordinating is concerned. Oh, yeah. He, he does, does everything. Like, the grip and everything, which I didn't realize until I looked at the credit. Like, Holy shit. He's there, like, yeah, I've he does everything. Set. Right. It's crazy. Everything. Yeah. It's so, so funny, man. Do you? Tom do Zimbrod. You still- do you still uh, think you're going to be doing something outside of, you know, acting that you may want to consider trying and taking a stab at if, if, you know, if given the opportunity or you're just content with where you are right now and just stick with that until you may change your mind down the line? Well, I may change my mind down the line, maybe some writing, who knows, but you just have to sit down and fucking do it, you know, Yeah, yeah. but uh, who knows right now I'm, you know, I'm just taking it one step at a time, one day at a time, honestly, you know, you never know what this life, man, this yeah. life is a total crap shoot. You don't know. Like, you can grind it out and probably going to die broken alone. You know, you never know with these things, you know, do you feel like being an actor or just working in the industry in general, um, that a lot of it has to come with a lot of it has to do with luck that you be in the right place at the right time, knowing the right people to help, you know, to be able to prolong your career to, to have those opportunities mm-hmm. available for you. Do you think a lot of it is luck or it's just, I mean, I don't know how you perceive things uh, when it comes to that, but what, what's, what's your perception on that? I was just thinking, I was on a run today and I was thinking this exact fucking statement really? of like, it has so much to do with luck. You have no idea how much it has to do with luck. Any motherfucker that breaks through will tell you, I got lucky. You know, a lot of hard work, a lot of preparation, of right. course. That's what it takes. Everybody knows that. Whoever gets there knows that. Very rarely has someone done no work and no prep and then had the opportunity. It's like, it's 99.9%. I'm sure it's fucking luck. Yeah. So even my shit with Brett, like it had I not, I saw his like listing on Actors Access or something, and I just you know, it's it's like a website where actors can submit, self submit, or through their agencies submit for roles Mm -hmm. that people list online, be it regionally or whatever. And I just happened to submit for it, and he happened to click on it, and I happened to do audition, and he happened to love it, you know. And, and that's just like, we're just starting out, you know, we're not talking big potatoes, you know, yeah. we're not talking like, yeah, I think it's the majority of it's luck with a lot of preparation. So, you know, I was talking, I was talking to Brett and I, and I was talking to another actress too um, about, you know, I used to, when I was, when I was younger, I, I, I always liked the question of how do you make it in the business? And, not, you know, after years of watching movies and learning what it, and hearing the stories and now talking to people in the industry, um, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's such a stupid question. I'm sorry if anyone, if I, if anyone believes in that question, that's a good question to ask. It's not, I think it's a very, it's a very redundant question because it, I don't, I don't think there's really an answer for you to give someone to say, how do you make in the business? Because there is no, there is no uh, book to, there's to no, offer yeah. because everyone yeah, no is There's really right. not. You can do it all right. Never make it. You could do it all fucking wrong and be at top of the world. Right. You know, it's, yeah, it's just there's no rhyme and reason to it. It's almost like existence itself, man. It's like we have no answers to any of this shit. Yeah. But to you, what 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 would you consider to be a successful in this case, let's say a successful artist in the industry? Like for you, what what would be considered a uh, success for you um, in, in your in your in your mind? To me, steady work is success. I think okay. steady work, regardless of what it is, regardless of it is you. If you're a commercial actor and you just do you know regional commercials, but you're constantly working. That's success to me, you know? Oh, you're Will Smith. You're making, you know, $20 million a movie. That's success to me too. You know I mean? It's like steady work, I think. But me, when you, success. but you're also, I mean, for you, you're, you're, uh, you, uh, I think you've answered my question because I think you've actually did say it, but you're happy with the way things are going for you right now. 
And you're obviously, you don't take it for granted uh, with the opportunities that are given here to you. Yeah. And just to be able to work is obviously something that you are happy to, to, to take right. up on because it's something that a lot of people don't necessarily have those opportunities to, to take on these, uh, these opportunities for themselves. So, yeah. so for you though, when you, when you're going through the motions right now, I mean, I, I, I'm curious now so far with where you are, because to me, it seems like you are a pretty reflect person that reflects on things. When you look back at yourself X amount of years ago and see where you are with yourself now, um, I mean, do you feel more happy with yourself as far as where you were and where you are with, you know, with yourself now, as far as career-wise, life-wise, and things of that nature? Career-wise, life-wise, any otherwise, I, I'm, it's still up in the air. I don't know. I mean, mm. I think I'm happy career-wise, but I want more. Of course, I want more. I want more success. I want, I, I want to work every day. Like, if I don't have a day off, that'd be great. You know what I mean? Like, I would, okay. work, I would work on stuff every day of my life. Personal life, that's uh, that goes that gets that's day to day too. You never of course, know. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm happier. I think I'm happier now, or more able to deal with the bullshit, my my own bullshit and other people's. You know? Right. Well, okay. So, and I hope you don't mind me asking this here. And, and if you don't want to, I completely understand. But I, I'm curious about um, the the struggles of an of an actor of you know yeah. booking work, find you know, and finding work for for a length of time, and then there's a period where you're not, you know, it's, everything's dry, and then you have to just work at it again. Um, yeah. going through that, um, do, you know, how, you dealing with, with the, the hardships that comes with that. And again, uh, when I'm asking, I'm not asking for you to delve into your, your private life, but how, how have you learned to deal with that? And then at the same time, balance out your private life too, where you're having to figure out, okay, do I, do I really, should I go after this here? Because I have been away from home for so long, uh, that, you know, my family, my, my, my loved ones and so on are wanting to be right. with me, but I, you know, I, I, if I go for this role, I think this could work out, but that's a risk yeah. that you just don't know if it's worth taking because if you take the chance of going out and getting the role and you don't get it and you come on back, you miss out on opportunities at home that were probably going to be much more meaningful that you probably wouldn't have gotten from getting that role that you desired right. there. So for you, how do you, how do you, how do you balance that out for yourself to come to a, a, a balanced a part of your life there? Well, I'm, I'm one of the fortunate ones. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have kids. I don't, you know, there's no divorce. There's no, there's no, I mean, I, all I have to worry about is myself. Okay. That's all I have to take care of. Um, and that's, I'm very fortunate to have that, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, granted you do miss out on other things in life, but that's kind of the price you pay with this kind of thing. And that's what makes it livable for me is that this is what I'm kind of married to this life mm -hmm. of wanting to work in film. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, I can manage it. Okay. That's what makes it manageable is because I don't have these other things that are important in life that are important to human beings. Like mm -hmm. human beings need these things. Human yeah. beings want these things. You know what I mean? Right. But, uh, the fact that in my position right now, I don't have any of that, that I can afford to just look forward and no distractions. I mean, it's, it's that's priceless. Interesting. But it, uh, but it has a heavy price. Yeah. I, I would imagine it does though. So yeah. You know, when you, when you start going through that and I mean, again, when you're seeing, you're seeing both sides of the coin there, where you're seeing how things are working well for other people in that particular field and where, you know, where they're obviously struggling with it, where things aren't working out for you. Um, I would imagine for you though, that when, as you're going through that there, something has, must've changed for you along the way, as far as how you may want to approach things a little more different. I know you don't, you just mentioned now that you don't have any commitment uh, as far as a relationship is concerned and having a family, yeah. but I'm assuming that somewhere down the line, going through what you have gone through, there's got to be a part of you that's preparing for the possibilities that if it were to come to that, I know how to handle that moving forward because of what I've experienced, what I've seen, yeah. and I know how to uh, how to approach it more, you know, more maturely, if you will. I hope that's the right word oh, I'm yeah, using for that. But for for you, yes. do you feel that way? Absolutely, yeah. Because okay. everything I've lost in my life is for a reason, and if I have if I didn't learn those reasons why I lost that, the next time. We'll just be the same, you know, the same scene, you know, I mean, the same uh, kind of event of like, you know, say, because this lifestyle, it can drive other people away. The people who don't understand this life of being an actor or in the entertainment business, mm -hmm. you know, the nights away, the things you have to do. A lot of people aren't cool with that. Or of just, you know, you're being being yourself or whatever, you know, it doesn't. What I'm trying to say is like, uh, I think in the future, if that does come around, I think I'd be all right. Who knows? Mm. Or maybe not. Maybe. I don't know if anybody <laughs> wants to put up with shit at all. I wouldn't put up with that shit. Really? 
Wow, you're really upfront. I like I love that. No, um, <laughs> so, all right. Well, so let me ask you about um, you know about your uh, going a little bit back with, about with yourself here. So, um, you mentioned about you know you wanted to do films since you were young. What was it for you that started that? Was it I mean, was it something that you saw? Was it a movie you saw, a television show, actor, anything that really sparked that interest for you that really kind of got the ball rolling for you? What was that turning point for you that really made you want to commit to that? Oh, fuck, man. It had to have been. Yeah, I was I was in I was in the uh, I was in the ninth grade. My mom comes home. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. I feel like I'm in fucking trouble. But she's like, hey, we're going to go watch this movie. I can't really tell you about what it is. I can't explain it to you right now, but I, you have to see this movie. And it, she's like, and it's called Pulp Fiction. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, I never heard of this before. I was like, okay, cool. Go with my mom to the theater. I'm not in trouble. I thought I was getting in trouble for some shit I'd done, you know, because I was a heathen. And uh, she took me to see Pulp Fiction, man. Watching Pulp Fiction with my mother, I walked out of that movie theater. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to do this. Yeah. I don't know if it's I wanted to be like John Travolta and do heroin. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know if I wanted to. You know, <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was taught. I, you know, I, I didn't really know what I was watching at the time. I didn't know what heroin was. I didn't know why. I knew he was doing drugs. But, you know, you know, and it was just so fucking special to me, man. And it was the fact that my mom took her, you know, 15 year old kid to go watch this movie because she wanted to show him something that fucking important that was going on, you know, in, in culture. Right. Because you know, definitely turning point with a lot of shit yeah. in movie you know. yeah absolutely so i so, think that was, it was right then and then i just oh man and just snowball from there there was but my mom always took me to see shit i mean i, I owe it all to her i think she really shaped my my mind with acting and motion so, pictures so you you were so you were a fan of movies prior to Pulp Fiction, where it really was kind of like the the, the that oh, yeah. where you realized okay, this is what I wanted. That movie was yeah, that yeah. I was I was a huge fan of film already. Yeah, okay. huge fan. Yeah, we're talking yeah, all the greats, man. Like I just I was I was head first. My mom used to work at this movie theater when I was a kid, and so I would go sit up there and instead of a babysitter. I would just go to the movie theater and just watch movie after movie after movie. Interesting. All day until she got off her shift. Excuse me. So that's where it all kind of started, man. It all kind of started with a lack of fucking uh, babysitters. You know, it was like. <laughs> my so you're mom, being babysitted you know, by Schwarzenegger, Stallone, and uh, Pacino, yes, all dude, those guys. We're talking Rocky Five. We're talking Commando. We're talking Legend. <laughs> Clue. This is like 1985 was the big year of like Amadeus. What like, oh, you saw Amadeus me. in theaters? Oh, I was freaked the fuck out. My mom took me to see it because she wanted to see it. And I was. Like when Salieri gets busted for finishing yeah. Mozart shit, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is the most dreadful thing. I don't know what's going on, but it's just like so scary to me. But I vividly remember it like it was yesterday. It's crazy. Do you, do you, did you actually understand what was going on? Because I remember when I saw the movie as a kid, I was like, what the? F I mean, it was a long movie. No, so I had no, I had no okay, idea. Okay. I just knew the guy was in trouble. This lady's <laughs> upset, and this motherfucker's dead. And <laughs> so that's what I was kind of getting at. And it, but I remember like the the I remember the cinematography that Milos Forman had, it was just like, it's it etched in my brain. It was just like, man, and the theater, I mean, the fucking screen seemed like it was a hundred feet high, you yeah, know, yeah, to yeah. me, my, my young age. You know what, you know, you just said something right now um, that really like caught my attention when you said Milos Forman. I was like, you know, is if you're a film lover, you know that name. And the fact that you dropped yeah. that name and I'm like, you really do know what you're talking about for me. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. so, you know, and here's the thing. Um, for movies, though, uh, you know, I, I I don't know how it was for you growing up as far as you being a film lover. And I know you mentioned you love sports, but um, were you growing up, you know, did you did you have a lot of friends uh, that had the same interests as yourself? Or were you kind of like more or less the loner where you had interest in, well, I guess, what most kids would like as far as sports were concerned? But movies was something that for me, my own personal experience, I almost felt like I was the only one that had that interest where everyone else is kind of like casually checked in and out. And then I would throw, you know, this guy direct this movie, the guy, okay, it's great. And it kind of moved on. I didn't care about that stuff, but for you, was it kind of more or less the same thing or did you have a, 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 a group of friends that you could share those with here and, 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 and develop that uh, community if you were uh, growing up. As oh a kid? yeah. Oh, I, I, I lucked the hell out, man. Cause oh, all my lucky. friends, they, they, well, we all love the same shit. Okay. You know, they were making they were making fucking, you know, super eight movies with, you know, dummies throwing them off of buildings and stuff like that. <laughs> we all love, we we were lucky enough to 
really uh, like absorb all that shit in at the same time we were all about it either it was sports or it was making movies and it was more about making movies than sports it turned out you know and a lot of a few of those guys still do it you know and then i moved down here from fort worth and ran into another group of guys that love the same kind of shit and so we would hang, we would hang out and it would just like uselessly further our you know knowledge of just film knowledge it do you know this rabbit i'm looking behind you look at that shit behind you bro i'm like <laughs> the rabbit holes we go down yeah with cinema and uh yeah no I, I lucked out every i was never a loner i got along with everybody you know yeah i only tended to piss people off the older i got it i think yeah <laughs> so uh, I was younger, everybody loved it so but so sports um i know you mentioned that you know film eventually just took over more of your 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 passion if you will but sports though uh you mentioned you played baseball uh you yeah. you, you watched sport or baseball and you knew uh, all the the all the stats and whatnot so oh, yeah. was that was that a possible uh goal that you had in mind like you know if, if acting doesn't work i may want to play baseball professionally was that something along the lines that you were kind of going for well it was like if baseball doesn't work i want to act oh you know, I see. it was yeah, but then I, I realized I couldn't pass my classes, man. I just could not sit in a class. I I was making terrible grades. There was no way I was going to go play for any college, regardless of how good I was. And so that was that. And I, so my senior year, I quit baseball. I go into theater. Everybody's like, you're fucking crazy or what <laughs> have you. And, you know, and it, just, it was like, that's why I kind of focused. I want to get my little taste of the theater, which isn't fucking high schools. So that's not even a thing. But I just know I don't want to spend any more time playing baseball or sports. And I was still in high school. So, but then it cuts to, I don't know, 15 years later before I even start really doing anything about it. You know, it's life kind of sends you on these little, you know, paths yeah. that are off the beat, off the beaten road. And then you come yeah. back to it. Thank God I just came back to it. You know? <laughs> so was it, was it, was the uh, theater, uh, in, at least in where in high school that you went to, was it was it was it a pretty big thing? Where you have was were there? Did you have like a big, a pretty well uh, established uh, theater group that this your school had that offer as far as like making uh, plays and whatnot for you to be able to try your acting, but you know, act your acting skills to really work on that material for you to be able to get better with the craft. Like, did you have that opportunity to do that there, or was the theater uh, production out there not as up to par? Maybe in some other areas that would have. Oh more yeah. Experience with that. No, this was like fucking 1998 in Fort Worth, Texas, man. There's not like the, the, theater, the theater shit wasn't anything, you know. Mm. It was more like, can I do it? Can I get on stage in front of everybody? All these motherfuckers I go to school with, they can make fun of me. Can I get on stage and do this? And when I did that, then I was like, okay, this is we're, we're on the step in the right direction. So I know I can get on stage and like be laughed at or cheered or whatever it was. You know, mm -hmm. I had a great time doing it. It was nothing serious, but that was just like a little stepping stone to where like, okay, well, you know, you know, you can at least get up there. Let's see what happens then, you know, and it just took me, it might take years. You know, what, was, what was the role that you took on that, um, that you oh, were performing for class? I, it was some, I was a fucking detective on some murder mystery <laughs> bullshit. I don't know. It was, something, <laughs> it was something so fucking stupid. I don't know. <laughs> I got to be the detective come in like with the Donald Pleasant's Halloween coat, you know? Ah, I see. And, uh, yeah, man. I don't know. It was just the start of the love affair, man. I've always had it. Interesting. Yeah. What's actually what, what what's considered to be your favorite movie of all time? Do you have uh, something that that's the, oh, the standard fuck. for you? Ah, so difficult, man. I know, right? So but, difficult. Yeah. You know, I mean, I Heat definitely was one of my top favorites of all time. Heat number one with like Michael Mann. I always loved that one, even as a kid. I don't know, man. I'm talking like Lethal Weapon two. Halloween two, you are you like Halloween two better than the first one? Fuck yes, man. really? Why? why? Why do you like that yes. one better? I'm curious why it's, you're it's wild, and I just recently saw the 4K like yeah, transfer. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so gorgeous, man! It's just so <laughs> watch it again, and you know, text me and tell me what you think, man. Okay, because okay. it's so much more fun. You know, I mean, the first one is great, of course. I fucking love it, man. Yeah. Like I used to you know, Michael Myers mask for Halloween as a kid and walk around the neighborhood. You know, these days you would get probably shot doing that shit. Yeah, true. But uh, when I was a kid, yeah, I was just I was obsessed with Michael Myers. That's all I wanted to do. That you, or be Donald Pleasant. Did you uh, did you like Halloween Kills? Yeah, and you know what? I was hard on it at first, but then it's like growing on me so much. I've probably seen it fifteen fucking times. Really? Yeah. 
Man, I oh, saw yeah. that movie twice. Yeah, I, mean, I, I couldn't get past it, honestly. No, the, the, the evil dies tonight shit. Sorry, no one hate me from that uh <laughs> that world or whatever. I was like, I, I couldn't really get on board with that. I didn't like the, I liked the style. I liked how he had his mask. Well, I you know what? Let's just yeah. not talk about it. that's private tech stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. Um well, uh well so okay so let me so let me ask you about this here so you're talking about your movies your the, the films you like and I, and I, I know we kind of went off topic here but um he was a film that you held in such high regard and then you oh, talk yeah. about lethal weapon 2 and then you mentioned halloween 2 which i'm still questioning because i'm not saying you're wrong but i'm always curious when people yeah. give the hey, you know, potato, potato. i know i know i know i know I'm, I'm just i'm kind of fucking around with you when i say that but i'm i'm always curious when i have someone give me an answer that i did not expect but anyways the point i'm getting is that so you got those three films uh but for you, what would be the, like, what was the, what's the one film that you, you can look back at that you hold, that you look at with such high regard. And every time you go back to it, you look and you say, God, this is, this movie is so fucking beautiful and every way or shape or form. When I go back to it, there's nothing about this film that I can walk away and say, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm a little bored of it. I mean, I'm a little tired of it. Uh, give it a few more months and I'll come back. But you, you know, you have the same exact sentiments every single time you watch it. Like what's that film for you that would stick out? above the rest in that regard i can't i mean i was just talking about this with somebody it was like it's just so it's just a perfect movie what was it it wasn't goodfellas which goodfellas is it was something else fuck i can't remember man was it a mafia movie uh the one i've been watching a lot recently is uh american gangster with uh denzel and uh russell oh, crowe the extended cut or the theatrical cut um whatever's on netflix man probably the <laughs> theatrical cut yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fuck, I don't know, man. So we're talking about what a perfect movie it is, and I can't remember what it is now. Who's in it? It's really bad for me. I don't know. I think it was my agent and I were talking about it. He, I mean, we're big fans of the horror genre, especially slasher genre stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we were talking about a movie that was just so fucking perfect, and I can't remember it now to save my life, bro. I'm sorry. It, it's a it's a slasher I'm movie. Gonna... Um, no. God damn it! I really can't remember, man. Do you remember who's in it of... though? No, I can't even tell you, man. Oh, okay. We'll do this again sometime, man. If you okay. don't get too bored, we'll do this again sometime. And I'll, I'll bring more material to it. That's all worry. No worries. It's all good. Yeah. So, okay. Well, so moving on from like film, uh, and you know, you've you've done you've done your work with film. Obviously, we we kind of we have an idea of where it all started here for you. Um, so, for anyone else that is you know that's that's watching right now, for what would be the one thing that if if people were to really try to get to know you and they've gotten to know you for a while and they have a perception of you now, knowing how you are, what would be the one thing that what you think would surprise people about you that most people wouldn't expect? Like as far as you know, things you may be interested in, uh, things you like um, that would be kind of considered out of the norm as far as your your own personal interests are concerned. Oh man, I don't know, man. I, I play a lot of myself on that screen a lot. Like, uh, there's a lot of me in a lot of these roles. Like, I'm, I mean, obviously, you kind of heighten things up for, you know, effect and stuff. But I mean, probably if anything, I'm, an, I'm a lot nicer than I seem on screen. That's for sure. Like, well, I, I felt like you were always not. nice from the first place when I first uh, started yeah, conversing with you. Not. I don't know. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Okay. I'm, my, I'm my least favorite subject, bro. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk, like, a lot of people like talking about themselves i fucking hate this shit really i enjoy talking to you bro this is oh, nice. I, I appreciate that well well okay so let's so let's move on to this here then um so oh. i'm i'm curious about uh your your thoughts about how um the uh, i i'm i'm interesting in your perspective because for me it seems like you are approaching you know one facet of the industry as far as acting is concerned you know i, I almost got yeah. the impression that you're not really diving into other areas as far as acting is concerned, right. you know, writing, directing, whatever the case may be for you, as you're going through the motions now, um, I'm sure you have seen things that have changed and it's, it's obvious to everyone who's, who pays attention to stuff. Things have changed as far as the industry is concerned with oh, yeah. you know, streaming and whatnot. And as a result yeah. of those things that also has affected how productions are handled and how things are made and where productions are being, are being held and whatnot for you. When you're going through the motions right now of going through the going to gigs from when you first started and where you are with it now, what's the biggest difference that you've noticed as far as the changes of concern, as far as the industry, or at least for yourself, as far as the acting uh, side of his concern that has changed? You realize, OK, now things are never going to be where they were before when I first got in. I, I think it more, more likely than anything is the audition process, uh, the not being in a room anymore. 
is -hmm. the biggest thing I've noticed because every audition you do now is on tape. There's no more walking into a room and they'd be like, oh, we like that, but uh, let's try it this way. You know what I mean? I like very rarely do you get that chance through tapes now to do that. I mean, that would be one of the most, I mean, I think the, I think the biggest change besides, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, yeah, I never really thought about it. Interesting. Don't really look around my surroundings too much anymore, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what well, do you, do you feel like that's a detriment as far as, you know, uh, the audition process where you you prefer having someone there with you to say hey try like this or we like what you've done here uh well, yeah, you'd, like rather be in the room. Okay. you'd rather be in the room with the casting directors and the or the writers or whomever is casting you so they can kind of guide you what they want and it's all about taking direction anyway like any casting director or anybody who casts anybody will tell you can they take direction can they change it you know what i mean so that's what i miss the most because you could do something like say I have an audition for something and then I see the person who got it and I watched the role on, on film and what they filmed, I was like, Oh fuck, I never would have done it that way. But had I known they were looking that way, I could have done it that way. You know what I mean? It's, That's what you're saying. Interesting. Yeah. Do you like the audition yeah. process or are you one of those actors that hates it, but you just do it to get, you know, to be able to, to get what you well, obviously it's necessary. It's a necessary evil, but it's also, I think it's, you know, it's just like, it's acting school. You know, you kind of, by getting hired or not getting hired, you kind of gauge on what works, man. Like you kind of like, I've, I've gauged on what I've done in previous auditions, what I do now. Like there are things you pick up on like, Oh shit. Well, it's like, you're going to school, you know, you might be paying a little bit more, but. Is, yeah. is there, is there a role that, um, you don't have to name any project if you don't want to, but, uh, is there a role that you were working so hard on to get and you didn't get it and you, and when you look at the final, when you look yeah. at the film or show and you realize, you know what, if I had gotten that role, I know I would have fucking killed it. But is there something that comes to mind? Yeah. Or at least from an experience, you don't have to name the project. I'm saying, I, actually, I don't want you to name the project. I'm saying, uh, but yeah. do you do you have those moments where you look back and you say, fuck, man, I, I know I would have done well if I if they just yeah. gave me that part. Yeah, yeah. there are a couple of those. Okay. There was something recently that I haven't seen yet, but I was like just devastated, you know, and it yeah. happens. Yeah. That's, how do, that's how do you deal with that, though, like, going through that? Like, when you, like, you're, you're working so hard and it doesn't come out, like, how do you personally deal with that to just overcome that move on it, it's hard you know it is hard it's hard it's easier said than done and be like oh just fucking leave it at the door man don't worry about it no it's way harder than that yeah and some days i handle it better than others but in, and ultimately i have to fucking move on you know right or else you drive yourself crazy so it, it's hard not to get worked up but when you get when you but if you come across big shit you know you get, you're gonna get worked up you know so um is there is there like a is there something that you that you put yourself that you let's say you talk to your agent and say hey listen um I saw something or you know I I felt like I want to try a role like this um haven't gotten these auditions for that I want to go for auditions like you know for a role of this sort um could you could you help me on that because I'm gonna put on, I want to put a reel together for me to be able to do a role like this I'm gonna either uh, yeah. audition tapes or whatever the case may be do you have something out there that you really want to try that you've never done before that you really want to go out and just expand on your your acting skills and then really work oh, on something God. that so what's what would be the role i'm not, I'm not saying like roles and like a, 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 an actual character or for a movie i'm talking about more like the type of roles like uh i don't know something that would be out of your comfort zone like uh oh you know, yeah something like maybe like something like the west wing you know that'll show it's like very aaron sorkin dialogue driven like we're talking mm -hmm. fucking pages of dialogue and they're walking and talking and they're just nailing it Paragraph after paragraph. That would be something I want to definitely get better at. Interesting. You know, it's 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 quite easy to fucking sit there and turn your head and do the movie thing and talk low and slow. Yeah, but if you can like if you can fire off and rap 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 rap, that's what I want to do at some point. You so, get good enough. So that's like your that's one of the top things you want to be able to pull off or at least get a, oh, yeah. a, a, a role like that to really expand on that to really train on. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Those guys so, are just long. Do you, so do you, are you trying to prepare in the event for something like that would occur where you can, I don't know if you're, maybe you read a book or something and you're just rehearsing the lines and then. Oh yeah. Trying to, yeah. Okay. So you do do All that as time. well. Okay. All the time. Yeah. You have to. Okay. You have to, or else you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, nothing else is going to change unless you like work at it. I, you know, what movie I actually did love. I, I, I think people are going to think I'm crazy for this year. And so my favorite movie, uh, the Friday films is uh, Jason takes Manhattan. I love that movie. I know the movie's no awful. Shit. You're like the I, only one. I, I know the movie's not very good. I know people don't like it. That because <laughs> I've seen because that was the first Jason film that I saw, and I loved what I saw. I was so 
goofy and it just i remember as a kid like this doesn't make any well, sense as a kid i fucking loved it i mean yeah. i still love it today I, like, I don't hate any of those movies you know yeah, what i mean same when, here. When people are like they suck i think they all are great yeah I remember, yeah, Jason ta- takes Manhattan, man. That was like the the very idea that Jason's gonna be in the city. Yeah. Remember, from the trailer and everything as a kid, yeah. I was just. Yeah, was so and excited. then when I saw the movie, I was like, oh, "Are we there yet?" I remember I was a kid. I was like, "This is taking too long to get to New York. It shouldn't be that long because they're up in Jersey. How how far is it up to get to New York?" Well, yeah. anyway, so and I have that poster too, by the way. So I have that framed up downstairs. So I'm like, I fucking love that thing. And it's also working in an independent film. It's like an independent film. Now you get it. Now you get why it was all on the boat and they yeah. spent so little time in Manhattan yeah. because they didn't have the budget for that shit. Yeah. So, because yeah. I think they shot it for like, what, two nights? Oh, two probably days. next to nothing. Probably yeah. next to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Compared so, to what they, they return. So, yeah. And it made sense when I look back. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I was too harsh on the film because I, I was like pissed off. It was out of, out of everything that, that was going, that wasn't good about the movie, which I knew there wasn't a lot of, a lot of good things about the film. The yeah. one thing that pissed me off the most was that it barely took place in New York. And I was like, this is a waste of time. Yeah. But I still love the regards. And when I go back, I have so many great memories around that movie because there was just so many. Well, so many good deaths, too. So yeah, many good Jason. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you also you have like. Uh, going over the fucking building. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And when the director talked about how he did that, I was like, that's fucking genius. Why don't you know? That's amazing, you know. And yeah, so there's like there's a lot of practical things that they've done to make the film turn out as well as, at least for me, how it turned out as well as it did. Um, yeah. that that I've come to appreciate, but you know, here's the thing about horror movies too. Because I, I, I know you mentioned you, you're a big fan of slashers. Um, oh, huge, so, bro. So I was uh, so I I I was lucky enough to watch the the remake of the Summit Party Massacre, the one that came out on Sci-Fi recently. So I saw oh, that shit. movie. Yeah, it's it's on Go Sci-Fi ahead. right now. So it's actually really good. I gave my thoughts on it, what I didn't like about it, and it had to do with the ending, which I won't ruin it here while we're recording, but um. So, and I, and I was like, I know I've seen this movie from some, I, I might have seen this movie, but I just didn't recall. And then when I saw the film, I went back to watch the real movie. That movie is so fucking good. I'm like, holy shit. I, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. I had seen it since I was like six or something. I think it might have been. Oh, the original? Movie. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. It's so, so good. And let me ask you about this. And, he, and I hope you don't mind me asking this because, so in the review, I said that I had heard somebody say that they want to see more women empowerment. And I'm reviewing a horror film. I'm thinking like, you know what? It's a good thing that they say that, but um, virtually every horror film that I've come across has always been a, a woman in-, in, in the strong lead character. Strong lead yeah, character. Yeah. It's always yeah. women. Yeah. And 99% of them survive. And I was yeah. like, have they never seen a horror movie? And I mean, I understand yeah. the, the preconceived notion I, and they, they are there. I'm not going to deny that, but when I was watching that movie, I was like, this movie's written by, by, by a woman. It's directed yeah. by a woman. And it stars nothing but women who are kicking ass. And I'm thinking like, I, and never, and here's a, but yeah, but here's the thing. I never occurred to me to look at it that way. I never thought of it as, you know, no. that's a strong, fe- it just, to me, it was a good character that featured women. Half of yeah. them were naked, but they featured women and they were good. They were good characters for me and they were fun. And I just thought to that's myself, you didn't think back then that they're women, no. characters, you know, that was yeah. another time in that was another time in universe, man. Where right. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I didn't have that preconceived notion. Yeah, I didn't have but. this preconceived notion about how like how people perceive things now where they want more of it. And I'm not saying they're wrong in saying that. I'm not I'm not certainly not getting that at all. But right, of course, it's nice to see the changes that have, have occurred and that for the better, I believe. But but back in those days, like I remember the little things that people are asking for more now is that we had a shit ton of them back in the day. Jim Cameron was doing, yeah. was doing Terminator. Oh, alien aliens right. you know sigourney weaver oh my god i was watching aliens the other day and i was just so blown away like how fucking badass that whole ending scene is where she's taping the guns up she's yeah. going back down the fucking elevator to fucking yeah. find the uh, you know newt yeah knowing she's going into fucking pure death you know and that yeah. that, that theme where she pauses and breathes like a few deep breaths yeah, man yeah, that's yeah. like dude this is fucking what it's all about yeah i've and- always learned more from women actors than for men Throughout my whole life, those are the really the go tos you get for like yeah. how it's done. I, I think, think you're right. I, mean, I think you're 100 yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 and you know what's funny? Um, you know, when, when you look at Jim Cameron movies, um, the what I guess with the exception of maybe like two films, uh, True Lies, well, even True Lies, I would say that you know you have a character like um, Jamie Lee uh, Curtis, yeah, who was you know a fumbling character, 
But then, you know, you see here that transition where she became a much more oh, she became a powered, yeah, badass. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, I think, you know, well, Jim Cameron, I think he said before that he got that a lot of that from his mother, who was really kind of like headstrong and yeah. put a, a lot of those uh, work ethic in him to him. And he used that as his mm -hmm. point of reference for the women, he, the characters he write in his movies. Yeah. And it, and it shows in his films. Oh, um, but I, I was going somewhere with this and I forgot where, where I was heading with this here. But, you know, so when you look when i'm looking at film now and i'm wondering for you too um you know especially now that you have made movies and you've worked on set um has has you ha, has your perception of viewing films changed a little bit too about how you look at certain things now where for example like uh, i'm going to use um let's say uh like one of my favorite movies of all time and this is no joke uh is street fighter with john claude van damme like I, that movie's silly. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're all yeah. Julie, right? So that movie's silly. I saw that in theater. I, I knew as a kid this movie's fucking ridiculous, but I love it. Yeah. There's a lot of technical flaws with the film in in, in a lot of areas, but as much as as much as a, a, that movie's gotten a lot of hate, there's something about that movie that kind of changed my perception of how I look at films. And as I as a, as the years have gone by, my my appreciation for the hard work has grown yeah. from that. Because I understand that if, if even if I don't like a movie, I don't necessarily want to cater on, uh, hold on to the negatives as far as like, you know, what, the, what, why the movie saw. I mean, I, I will point yeah. it out. Yeah. But what I don't like to do it for is independent movies because I, there's a lot of preconceived notion about there about how independent films aren't always as good. And I'm like, well, I don't think that's true. I think there, maybe the, maybe the quality isn't as good, but the, the intention and the direction of the story is really good. They just didn't have the resources yeah. to put it all together. So if you pay right. attention to the finer details, I think in it, yeah, but you know, I want explosions and they just had a firecracker. I'm like, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you, you, exactly. you're working with yeah. what they can. You got, you got the right idea. You know, so, you have to... yeah. So I'm like, so for you though, when you're looking at movies now, are you, does your perception change on how you view films since, you know, you being a film lover growing up, working in the industry, yeah. seeing how things put together, and now you're watching the film, whether you like a movie or not, but does your perception change about how how you view it all because of your experience yeah. working on set? Yeah, it most definitely does. It, it definitely does because, but in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Like I sit there, like what you just kind of described is like, I, I start noticing things that are like, wow, they pulled that off. Or like, I never focus on, oh, I know that they didn't have this right there, you mm -hmm. know, or I, I wanted something like, I never focus on the negative. It's only like, even if it's like horrific writing and horrific acting, I still, I'm just like, this is fucking great, you know? Yeah. But I mostly, yeah, it's changed my, because I'll start to appreciate like, holy shit, they pulled off that shot. Like, oh fuck, how the fuck did they do that? Yeah, Without yeah. taking myself out of the story the same, because I'm still a, I'm still a seven year old kid inside that just loves yeah. going to the fucking movie theater. Yeah. So I can, I, it doesn't detach me, it, you know? Yeah. I just kind of, you know, kind of compartmentalize it to like, oh, that was fucking bad ass. Yeah, or but do you still i mean even if you don't like it like for you when you don't if, if you watch a film that you don't like do you does your sentiment on you not liking the film has that changed for you as far as how you use something you didn't like as a kid not knowing how it all was put together that has, has that changed a great deal for you like okay well yeah yeah and usually if i don't like something it's because whatever i'm watching doesn't interest me really because okay. i'm such a huge fan of film i can pretty much watch anything you know at yeah. least if it can hold my attention, but I don't know. I mean, what I watch these days, I, I mean, I'm, I spend most of my time on Turner classic movies. I, I spend a lot of my time on old shit rather than anything new. Basically. Well, like which stuff are you talking about old? A lot of, a lot of film noir right now going into that fucking like Sterling Hayden film noir. Oh, okay. I, you know, I love me some Cagney. I love like the old gangster movies. So I, I mean, I'm so in love with Hitchcock and especially with them. Um, you know, we're talking like Vertigo, Rear Window, mm -hmm. those Vista Vision days, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just such a huge fan of that more than people are like, hey, have you watched this show? Have you watched this? I'm like, fuck, dude, there's so much goddamn material out there. Where do I start? Where do I begin? Yeah. Where do I begin without losing my whole life? Like, you know, because <laughs> like there's too much shit out there to watch. A great time to be an actor, but terrible time if you want to get shit done. Like, uh, as a human <laughs> being, there's too much shit. There's just way too much. You know, I, you know what I actually started getting into? Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Basil Rathbone, who played Sherlock Holmes back in the uh, 30s and 20s, 30s and, 50s and 40s. Hmm. Um, so he was one of what the first name? Basil Rathbone. No. So if you, yeah. So if you go on, uh, if you have Amazon, you just go on Amazon. There's, you, he's got quite a few movies there. So I was, I was at Walmart and I, I, I always go through the movie section to find something cool that I didn't come across before. 
And when I was a kid, I used to, I, I grew up watching those movies as a kid and it hadn't, it's been such a long time since I've seen that I came across it on Amazon fairly recently. I was like, oh shit, I remember this movie when I was a kid. This is actually really good. Obviously it's dated, but it was still good for me. I found it entertaining. So I was blown away when they had like a, a 14 film box set or you know pack of like all his yeah. movies. So I bought it. And so I said, I have it here with me. Walmart you know, or something like what, what oh, it's doing there. You have no idea, you know? Yeah. Like it's, Walmart is like uh, a gold mine for me because there are some shit that I've I've come across is like I, I can't believe stuff even exists now. Where I'm like I'm I, I don't know how you feel about uh, physical media, but I, I I'm you can tell I'm, I love it. But I I'm not one of those people who says you know you should fight to keep it. I believe you should, but I don't think it's uh it's an it's a battle really worth arguing about because it's you know give and take. Oh, they're going to do, do what they want to do anyway, bro. Yeah, yeah, they're going to do what they want to do anyway with it. But for you though, like when you, when you're going to, you know, your streaming services, do you prefer that more so now, as opposed to physical me where, you know, you obviously like, you look at this here, like it's, it's taking up a yeah. lot of space. It's good aesthetically, but is it really necessary? Probably not, but I like it. But oh, yeah. when you're, when you're watching movies though, uh, do you feel more, do you feel better with just, I'm going to go on Netflix and watch this film, or I'm going to go on Amazon and watch them because they have it available there. And the, and the accessibility is right there at the drop of a hat. So do you prefer that more than you probably will with physical media or what's your take on it for yourself now? Now in my, in the stage of my life, I've become like a minimalist. I'm getting, I'm starting to get rid of all my shit. I give, I've, yeah. I got rid of hundreds upon hundreds of Blu-rays, blah, 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 DVDs, sold them, gave them away, whatever. And so now it helps me just to have the click, but I definitely miss the artwork, the ec, the, the, the supplementals, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like what, the extras, like whoever the fuck is doing this streaming bullshit needs to figure out a way to have the extras along with the movie on like, say, if you click a movie, yeah, yeah. you should be able to like, click all the extras that are on the Blu-ray. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or the DVD, you know, yeah, like yeah. the commentaries, stuff like that. Like I'm a huge fan of commentaries. Same here. I love watching a, a film with commentary, you know. You know, but, Disney Plus does that though. I think with a virtual well, they do it? From, okay. Yeah. Um, Disney's doing it. Yeah. Well, because they own the property though. But yeah, you yeah. know. Oh, okay. That that could be a lot of what has to do with it. Yeah. Too, yeah. Well, here's the thing though. Um, you know, for me, I don't I don't know how you feel about this. Like special features for me, it's kind of hit and miss. Either it's gonna be good or it's just gonna be Oh, the same old bullshit. Yeah. Right. It's all a lot of the EPKs, you know. Hey, you know, what was it look? You know, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, this was a 24 great. second clip of like a fucking talk, some some actor on set talking about the character, you don't give a shit. Right. Uh, Screen Factory and Shout Factory have been like really good oh about Oh my God. Those guys are fucking well, life those, shooters. Yes. Dude, 100%. 100%. Um, like Fright Night. Fright Night is another one of my favorites. I love that. Dude, movie. Fright Night. Did you like the new one, the remake? I, I like the remake. I watched the remake. I was like, I like it. It's completely different. It's not yeah. the same movie. Who cares? At least they're fucking homaging this shit. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a huge fan of the whole 80s slashers. Like, so am uh, I. Man. Yeah. That's a genre that. Night, night, yeah, uh, Cobra. Cobra is always on the rotation. I love Cobra. We were seeing that in the theater as a kid with really? Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And, like the Night Slasher, the Night Stalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was that like Brian Thompson's ending scene. You know, when he's <laughs> in the refinery and he's calling out, you know, Stallone with the knife. You know, it's just fucking amazing to me. Man. He was actually one of the most scariest guys I've ever seen on screen. I've ever seen in my fucking life. How was that? Like ever seen in my life? Oh like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Met yeah. The guy I've never met him in real life. He, he's, he's a oh, really yeah, nice guy. Yeah. How was your really dad? Nice guy. <laughs> well, no, you know, so when I watched that movie as a kid, I remember I was terrified of the guy because he, you know, he had that look. He had that that straw jaw, but he just just had that oh, villainous fuck. look. And then the knife, you know, him like, oh, bro, you know, yeah. I was like, whoa, cool. this dude is like. Yeah. So I, I always figured that. Know, yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> you know, here's the thing about Stallone though, um, that you got to give him a lot of credit for. Um, Whenever he's whenever he's in charge of a production, if he's looking to have finding a villain, he knows what is going to make a really good villain, right? When you look at Cobra, oh, you yes. have a lot to try to do with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even when that was like him and Mickey Rourke. What was that? Him and Mickey Rourke, Get Carter. Like, it's a famous story. Mickey Rourke. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mickey Rourke says he was he's broke as shit sitting yeah. in a diner or something. Yeah, you've heard yeah. the story, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, somebody looks like he can kick my ass. Yep. Like you want a job? Yeah. 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 And then yeah. so there was for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, so he he got offered a, for the role. He got offered the role, but they're, I guess the producer were giving him X amount of money, and he was like, "Nope, I want more." And knowing that he needed the money, and he you know that money was more than enough to cover for whatever amount of time. 
and yeah. they called back and said, all right, we'll give you what you're asking for. And then it turns out that Stallone like took a piece of his salary and gave it to him. So that way he could yeah. do the part. And I was like, okay, oh, great. Nice. Yeah, cool. yeah. Love Stallone. I, so do I. I he's my, I, I, ever since um, really was Demolition Man, because I was a fan of him before, but that Demolition Man uh, was a film that made me like, uh, uh, put Stallone in my top actor of all time. He's my absolute favorite of he's all time. He's so fucking good, bro. Yeah. He is so good. Sorry to throw you out right now, but I'm like, he's he's so good, man. He's <laughs> so fucking good. Like everything he does, man. People don't really give him that credit. I don't know why. Yeah, same here. I think you know what's going to be sad is like a long time from now. Yeah. Film enthusiasts will look back on him with more reverency. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Just. He's so fucking good. Yeah, you know, and uh, I'm wishing, man. so you, good, man. I love so that. Good. Did you see Rocky Four the the recut? No, I didn't even know there was one. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a wow. there's a yeah. well, yeah, there's a director's cut of Rocky Four that's out right now. I actually rented it on Amazon. So uh, as of this recording, I'm I'm planning on doing a review. I'm, I'm gonna because by the time this comes out, you know, that review will probably come out well before then, but. I saw the movie and I was so excited for it because this is the story that I heard. And so Lauren, actually, if you actually go on YouTube, there is a 90 minute documentary that I think you would enjoy where it shows what he was going through and making, you know, re-editing the film, the story, what he would have done differently. And so on. it's a beautiful, beautiful documentary that's directed wow. by John Hersfeld, I believe, who was a good friend of Salome. But anyway, so it goes into in depth about, you know, the opportunity he's been given to re-edit the movie to make it a much more grounded film because that movie was like the most cartoonish out of all the other Rocky films. Um, but I love that documentary. I love that documentary way more than I do the director's cut. I hate to say it. I didn't Wait, was I thought, it worse than the, than the, than the theatrical. I don't think it's worse. I just don't think the way that they had, that he had done it. And I'm, I'm again, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying that he should have done something different with it. What I think it was is this thing. And I think you'll understand if you watch the film, you may notice this here. So they shot the movie a certain, he shot the film a certain way where, you know, it was the eighties and he had a certain vision, how he wanted the film to come out. And when you watch right. the movie, it's definitely a film of its time. So the the humanity of like Rocky, as far as the realism is concerned, is kind of like like kind of pushed out the window a little bit, became a little bit more like uh, Irish, right? So he yeah. tried to bring that back with the recut. And the way the film is, has been edited, where they are adding scenes, removing a lot of scenes, including the robot scene with uh, um, that the Rocky, what's his name? Uh, yeah. Polly. Uh, oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. With her and Polly. Yeah. The robot yeah. and Polly. Yeah. So that robot is gone. And then yeah. you know, now yeah. it's more, Sorry. more scenes that are just more focused on like the human aspect of Apollo, where you understand where he's coming from. And then you're as there's more, uh, the, some of the fight scenes are edited differently now to see more of like a, a different perspective, like how Apollo is getting the better hand of the better, uh, yeah, the better of uh, Drago and the, in that fight. And then he ends up beating his demise. Ah. And of course, like Rocky having, you know, showing different parts of the fight that we didn't see before. So there is, there are, de there definitely are major changes with the film. Here's the thing. It's still 94 minutes long. Whereas the other film was about the same time. <laughs> so he basically he took out 40 minutes and added new footage to kind of make up for that. The way that it's edited, just didn't sit well with me. And the way that he was trying to add those, uh, those, those human moments in the movies didn't necessarily, I think, fit because there was not enough material to really expand on that to really flesh it out a little bit better so right. it was almost as if the let's just oh, have the fucking footage to back up what he really wanted to put in there uh, more or less that yeah that i would i think so um but yeah that's pretty much it though like i i i didn't i didn't hate the movie but i just didn't think it was as as good as i was hoping it would be and it was I, well, I, 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 bro don't fix it well, also. Like, well, you know, here, if, if you had the opportunity to work on if yeah, I had, exactly. you know, we're, we're, if we had the opportunity to work on a movie that we could retouch and we can and, and have the chance to work on it, especially if you're getting paid for yeah. it, I probably would do it. But what right. we got there is, you know, for me, it was just like more or less, ah, it was okay, but it was, it was good. But I, I don't think it was really that necessary after what I saw. Um, but I, I still God. would buy it. I still would own it, but you know, that's just me. You know, who's fucking great in that movie Who is fucking homeboy who plays uh apollo's old um oh his trainer tony duke his old duke. what's his name duke tony duke? Yeah. no duke but what's his name in in real life oh um i know exactly um i forgot oh, his name it, i know he's he, not but um but he was in um fuck it, he's in the, the shining movie? the shining yes when stanley he was the guy that stanley kubrick kept on set to play chess yeah um whatever his name is yeah he is i can't believe that's kind of insulting because he 
he's so good in that movie. Yeah. Ah, oh, what the fuck? I don't know. Who knows? But so was so was uh, Apollo Creed, uh, Carl Weathers. Oh my yeah. fucking god! In every single Rocky movie he was in, he was fucking amazing. Yeah, he's really my favorite good. Carl Weathers role is. They wouldn't let me play on the pro tour anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Because you're black. Hell no! Damn alligator bit my hand off. Oh my god! Yeah, Happy okay, Gilmore. Uh, I thought you were gonna say yeah. Action Jackson. I was like, oh, you're gonna go there now. I see what you're going. Oh no, no. <laughs> um, so, because you know, we're 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 going all over, which I love. We're going all over the place. Yeah, and I, and I love that. So, so let me ask you uh, about uh, how the slate for next year, because Brett kind of gave me some insight. He didn't give me a lot really, but he yeah. gave me some insight about what some upcoming projects that you guys are gonna be working on. That I, I think is the one movie you're gonna be shooting. I believe oh. early next year that you're really the only returning cast member where everyone else is pretty much, I believe is coming out of LA to shoot on this Western, I believe uh, that you guys got working on. Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything yet. I don't, I, in all honesty, I don't know anything yet. Okay. Okay. I haven't heard anything about that. I know he's going to film a Western. If I'm a part of it or not, I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm thinking yeah. of Zimbrad. Then I'm probably what I'm thinking of here. Might so my, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, it, might be, it might be the buckskin. Uh, it might have something to do with buckskin storyline wise. Mm. I, think I talked to something about like, something about that. Okay. And yeah, maybe a, a prequel. In. Yeah, there's maybe. another project. I could be way show. off. Don't quote me on any of this shit. You know, <laughs> that would know more than me, obviously. Well, I, I was just, I think, because he was telling me he was, there was another project that he had you, uh, I think, signed up for that uh, we were the only returning cast member. But again, I'm, yeah, I might be thinking of Zembra. But yeah. the point I'm getting Who is that, knows? you know, you, you've you got, you've got some, you know, he was telling me about some upcoming projects he's working on that one of which he's actually really, really excited for that hasn't really been officially you know, gotten greenlit yet, but he's working on that. I'm not sure if he shared that with you. And he didn't share any details with me at all other than the fact it's a cool story. That's the extent of that I've uh, he shared with me as far as what the film is going to be about. Um, yeah. But for you though, um, for for 2021, um, you know, have you, you know, do you, have, you felt like this was a good year for you as far as your the amount of work you've done is concerned. And then uh, with what you've been able to accomplish this year, looking into next year, are you feeling more or less the same thing? Like, okay, now that I've gotten this done, you know, 2022 starting to look a little bit more promising for myself uh, as far as- Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I was I was very happy with what's gone. Like, man, the, the, the amount of production that Brett and I put in the past couple of years is, that's fucking crazy. Like, yeah, you ask a lot of people, like, no one can really put it out like he does, man. Like, he's like, he's, we're jamming him out. So yeah, yeah, that was great. And yeah, definitely it's a stepping stone. Let's see what happens. I mean, who knows? <laughs> I mean, just because Brett's into my shit, yeah. Or you're into my shit doesn't mean I'm gonna get hired anywhere. You never know. Yeah. You know, but well, you know, I have I'm never a feeling about it. I uh when I look at your when I look at the films, the one film I actually saw uh just last yeah, it was last yeah, it was last night, the night before, I can't remember. But uh one way I, I wasn't sure what to expect, but when I saw it, I was actually really happy with it. I actually really loved the movie, which was Honor Among Thieves. That movie, in my opinion, was a, a really good a film for a number of different reasons, but really a lot of it had to do with you because there was, you know, I think, you know, I'm sure you, uh, Brett already noticed here before, but you, you definitely play a really good, you know, a rough and tough character. And yeah. what, I, what I love about the film, the role that you had is that, you know, there was a certain humanity you had with the character, which I don't know if, if the film was meant to be some sort of social commentary because there was a little, a little bit of that in the film um at least from that's how i perceived it but when when i'm watching the movie it there's a there's a part of your character that is clear you know you fighting for, fighting for the confederacy uh in 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 um of, of the war now you are in a position where you realize that war is just bullshit and you're and you're kind of like neutral now where you just don't want any part of it and no. here's the thing that i actually appreciate that brett had done with that role for you is that giving you a you know not playing that stereotypical role of like a guy who comes off war and is still adamant about those set of values but instead has been altered because of what he has gone through so like yeah. when i look at that film there was I, I what i really sort of appreciate that it reminded me a lot believe it or not of frog where there's a complexity and there's almost as if though you're not you don't feel worthy and then you're also scared of like the of what the uh of what it is that you know you may not fulfill as or you may not be able to um uh, meet the expectations of your wife and everyone else. And then you've been able to kind of be able to overcome that eventually as the story progresses there. But, you know, when, when you're looking at the roles that Brett's re giving, you know, writing for you and then reaching out to you, 
do you feel confident as far as like what him trusting you to, to, and giving you something brand new to be able to uh, flex your uh, acting muscles, if you will? Or oh, yeah. is there a lot of it where you hey, Brett, can we try something like this instead for the next role? He's like, all right, let me take that in consideration. I'll write it out for you. Oh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, like uh, maybe just, well, there'll be maybe there's something with a character like he'll write and I'll be like, well, let me say it this way because like you're, you're, you know, you're, you're Puerto Rican Jew from New Jersey and you're writing Texas characters. <laughs> I'm a dude from Texas. Like I know I'm going to say exactly what you're going to say, but in this way and okay. it, it will go through, you know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, there'll be times like that, but usually he, and he kind of just writes from knowing me, I think too. Like when I read every, every next script I get from Brett, it's like, uh, <laughs> Oh, it sounds more and more like what I would say. Like he, like he has such a great ear. Like he picks up and he, he absorbs everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if he tailors a lot of the roles that I play for him through mm -hmm. just like his, his experience with me and and then what he wants for the character. Interesting. So yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, I, I was, I was joking around. I, I can't remember if I was referring to you or Zempra that you guys are like basically the Robert De Niro's to his Scorsese, where you guys are always. Uh, working on a project that yeah, you know always something yeah it's the best <laughs> i tell them all the time too i'm like man it's i have not we'll get to have that regardless of the scope i mean if we're making these movies for 12 grand or scorsese's making them for fucking 200 million mm -hmm. from netflix it still feels the same you know what i mean like it would yeah do you I mean, do grand you, is, I'm, do you uh, feel like you know when at, at, when you're looking at brett continue on with his work um there's a part of you, like, are you looking at him and saying, you know what, this guy, I mean, I know, I, I believe you are, but do you look at him and say, you know what, man, this guy, like, I feel like, especially after watching 90 Feet, um, that if, you know, if given the opportunity to, to really, like, just to to take the time to tell the story and really have all the resources and the, and the, the funds available, that I think he's yeah. more than capable of really pulling up some really, really awesome stuff. But when you watch him work, do you feel like, you know, when, you, when you've seen this guy that, you know, do you feel like he's getting better in probably other areas that you picked up before that he probably was struggling in and then you realize, oh, wait a minute, now this time around, he's on point. He's able to move on quicker or adapt better or whatever the case may be. Well, I've never been that skeptical in judgment. I've never been like, I've never been that aware, skeptical about, or like picking apart whatever he does anyway. You okay. know what I mean? Or anybody. So I never thought about it like that, but I definitely, I always think about like, man, motherfucker, if this guy had a fucking budget, and time yeah. who knows what the fuck he could do like who knows as he can do so much with so little man yeah a lot of people don't realize that how little that he has to work with it just blows my mind that we get anything done at all and then he puts out steady you know just fucking decent independent shit man yeah, yeah. at least exciting stuff yeah 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 what's what for yeah. you what's what's your favorite uh role that you played uh under uh, under b22 where you under Bittman, oh fuck it probably have to be Rodeo Thief was probably the most personal yeah. and uh, one of my best performances. Maybe yeah, not even that came out on the screen, but just more about like the filming it. Yeah. But, but you said uh, it's personal, but, but what about that one? Is personal for you? Oh, just dealing with the death of a father because I was going through the death of my father uh, okay. at the same time, and uh, that's another conversation. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know, man. Shit was firing off all cylinders. I was hitting it. You know, we were hitting it we there weren't like it wasn't like it was a human story you know like 90 feet from home was yeah yeah like like because 90 feet from home then we go to copper bill copper yeah. bill is a lot more uh canon film-esque like you know what i mean you know canon movies yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, a lot more 10 to midnight or like you yeah. know fucking yeah i never thought of it you're 100 percent right yeah that's good. and then we go back to like the rodeo thief which is much more it still has those elements of like some yeah. kind of like heightened uh exploitation type shit of like yeah, yeah. violence and like criminality but still had a human story to it and so i think you know that 90 feet from home probably 90 feet from home i just love so much but even when i watch 90 feet from home i'm like motherfucker you're so green i was like you, you, all the shit i do like i learned a lot from that movie like there's there's a lot of times i was too extra a lot of times i should have done more <laughs> you just learn you learn by watching yourself you gotta, right you gotta drink and watch yourself and then you know like you gotta fucking pick yourself apart so you won't have so with the performance. Then? I've gotten better. I think I've gotten better each bit in the film yeah. I'm in with him. Yeah. You know. But were you I'm not saying. happy with the performance in 90 feet? Because I thought you were good in that role. In fact, I, oh, no, thing, I, was really, I, I was really happy with it. 
Okay. But okay. no, when I watch it now, when I watch it now, I'm like, oh, bro, you're bringing it like it's a little too much right there. Like just a little too much. Like I see what you're saying. You don't okay. need to okay. like, how about you just leave your face alone? Don't do a face. Like after you say something, just sit there and think about it. You know, like when you're like showing someone that you're upset without saying anything. You know, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see. <laughs> a lot of okay. actors know that shit. They're like, Interesting. But uh, yeah, man, those two, man. Yeah. But is honestly, it, everything I work on with Brett, it's just so much fun. Full. It's just like going right. to, you know, you're showing up to like work with your buddy. You both, you know, what each other's thinking. The best about Brett, when I look at him, I'm like, do we get it? And he's like, I know you, you're not going to be happy. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do it again. <laughs> like the fact that he knows me well enough to be like, I know you, you're not going to be happy with it. You're not going to like it. I'm like, all right, let's run it. Interesting. That's so, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I love that you guys had a relationship it, to for him to know that for, about you. I think it's really fascinating. Oh, hundred percent. And to be honest enough, like I definitely think if, if he didn't like what I was doing, he would he would definitely fucking tell me. You okay. know what I mean? And that's all an actor can hope for with somebody. You know, um, so I, I want get to get into boxing real quick because you were you were initially offered the part and you were gonna play the right. part, but obviously you know, Fear of the Walking Dead came in, he ended up going with that. So when, when Brett was telling me about how hard he was on Zembrod and making that movie, like, you know, for really, for him to really get into that character, get in that yeah. mindset. And I agree hundred percent. I think that's actually his best performance because you can definitely see I that. Too. progression. Tom was great. Yeah. He's almost great. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking to myself, um, could that have worked with you? Uh, I'm not saying that you guys didn't have, nope. wouldn't have I don't know if I would have done a better job. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Okay. I honestly don't think I would have, uh, I wasn't, a, I didn't look like Tom. Tom has that look of like, I, I get on the chubby side, my friend. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I, overeat. I like, you know, it would take a lot for me to look like Tom and Tom had the perfect look and he was just so good in it, man. Yeah. He rarely gets a chance to uh, ex like show his shit and Tom's shit time and time is really good. You know, like, um, uh, even like all his character shit is so great, man. Yeah. But the fact he gets a leading role and he did so well with it too. Yeah. Him and Robert Keith, who's yeah. another fucking story altogether. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zimbrod. Zimbrod's so good in 90 feet from home as the abusive stepdad to the yeah. overweight child. Yeah. Who added half the kids underweight. I'm trying to say it in such a, like a, a way that's civilized. Cause you know, I want to say all these adjectives or whatever the fuck or yeah. whatever the fuck. You anyway. But, uh, yeah, he's just a joy to watch. I don't know. And in the Operation Overlord, have you seen that one yet? The the World I War did. II? Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. He was good in that. I like that, him in that movie that's too. My least, that's my least favorite performance by myself. I was like, I, I wasn't happy with it. You weren't happy with that performance? I not for not I wasn't happy with mine at all. But that's on me. That's nobody's else. I got yeah. you. Well, yeah. so let me ask you about two two actors you've worked with here. Um uh you've worked with wrestlers. Shawn Michaels and Dusty Rose, both yeah. legendary figures. Um, yeah, you know, and you've got to work with these you've these uh, these athletes here. And here's the thing: the first one that I saw of uh, of you guys was Copper Bill. And you know, you mentioned before about how the film is kind of heightened, and I agree with 100. percent And I actually really do like that film. But here's what I wanted to ask you about working with Dusty because. I didn't, I'm not saying that I didn't expect him to be a good, a, a good actor because I figured that if you're in wrestling, you have to be good at acting in some capacity for you to be able to pull off, you know, your character and be in the right emotion, you know, have those emotional beats. And I realized that, holy shit, he's actually really good at what he's doing. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm curious about you. Did you, first of all, were you a wrestling fan knowing who he was, or at least did you, were you aware of who he was? And then at any point, did you have any preconceived notion, not knowing if you weren't aware of him about a wrestler? Like, did you have any of that mindset at all walking into that production, thinking that, I don't know if it'll work out, not knowing the guy or not knowing who oh, he was? I was already, I, I grew up with fucking WWF. Which okay, is not okay. WWF, right? So I, I'm a, was well-versed in Goldust and the okay. Heartbreak Kid. I was, I was well-versed in all this shit. And I'll never forget fucking Dustin. He was so good. Um, there was a scene he had like this two or three, three minute monologue. Oh yeah. I Nothing else. Yep. It was his first take. I sat there and I forgot my fucking lines. We had to refilm my shit because I was got lost and listening to what he was doing. He was so fucking good at it. Yeah. At one point in production, he comes up to me. He was like, cause he's like six, 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 seven. So he's like up here. He's like, 
I'm fucking everything up. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? I don't know what I'm doing. I was like, you've been doing this for 30 years. What do you mean? <laughs> if anything, bro, just don't stop. Don't stop in the middle of what you're doing because you think you fucked up. Just keep going because you're doing great. And I was just trying to like, it was so bizarre to me to try to talk to Goldust about yeah, yeah. like how like he's nervous of what he's doing right here when he's done. Like, I was like, dude, what are you talking about? You've been doing this your whole life. Yeah. And you're fucking great. Like, dude. So he really was that insecure? Like, himself? Really? It was so funny because he was like, really? I'm like, yes, fucking really. You're amazing, dude. So he, he didn't really was, get it. but He really was that insecure? He was good at the he was that worried about his performance in that movie. That's all I can say. Now, I can't say anything about his insecurities or anything like okay. that. Okay, he okay. probably kicked my ass. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, dude, he was like, he, he was legitimately worried about what we were doing. I'm like, bro, you were fucking, do you not realize you've already been in the moon and back? Like, this yeah, is yeah. small potato. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought I, he did great. I mean, I, I thought so too. I'm trying to get him to do another one. I hope yeah. you guys do because he was awesome in that movie. I, I really, really was uh, happy with what I saw with him, and I and I was actually kind of surprised yes, that really our yeah. chemistry was so good. We yeah. could just so easy between him and I. I, I was actually surprised he was not back to work on some more, but I know he's with AEW now, so I I know his his, his schedule. Might oh, be I mean, yeah, he's got his hands full, I'm sure. But yeah. yeah, I mean, but further on down the road, hopefully he wants to do it. Yeah, I hope he does because he was great in that Sean, movie. Sean, Sean was another great one. Sean yeah. was, yeah. It, so um, when you met him, though, um, what was what was the experience like the first time around uh, walk, uh, meeting him uh, it, for on set for the first time? Or maybe you, I'm not sure if you met him beforehand. Oh, uh, uh, on 90 feet from home with Sean. Uh, he was he was already in character. He was sitting, you know, he was sitting in the corner going over his lines to nobody. You know what I mean? Just like talking about like crazy things actors do. Mm hmm. Um, so finally, he kind of flagged me over. He was like, hey, do you want to go over some lines? I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. I didn't want to bother him. But regardless. I was him being like the heartbreak kid and shit, but I didn't want to fuck. I was still starstruck. Yeah. Um, I ended up having a, like, I remember one scene like in the graveyard when I, when I grab him and shit and try to roughhouse him. Uh, yeah. He didn't know I was going to do any of that. Like he didn't know I was going to scream in his face and hit him with the flowers. He had no idea I was going to do any of that shit. I was like, Brett, I'm just going to freak this fucker out real quick and see what, you know, <laughs> I tell you what, it was trying to push, it was trying to push like a brick house. Like that man was so stout and he's, I'm, I'm not a tall guy, but he was a little bit shorter than me, but just like when you, when you, when you kind of someone with all muscle, you're just like, holy shit, this fucking yeah. brick house. But I thought he did a good job. He did a good job. I think so too. You know who did a good job in that movie that no one really talks about was Dean Kane. Dean Kane did such a phenomenal job in that movie, man. Yeah. I was like, that little role that he had, I was kind of like, fuck, man. Like, Dean Kane, I mean, I don't know what the fuck's going on with his life. Right, whatever the fucking the yeah. social media world is, yeah, tweets, yeah. whatever. But he was good in this. And then I come across this movie called. Um, out of time with Denzel Washington, I think, oh, yeah. where yeah. Dean Have a plays like this fucking uh, husband jilted, and he was so good at that. He yeah. was like holding him, holding his own with uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah, I was just messaging my wife right now. Yeah. Oh, you're married? How long have you been married? Fifteen years. Holy shit, bro! You're like <laughs> yeah. on the fucking the 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 one percentile. <laughs> Fifteen years and uh, I'm joking. Like, That's not too bad. I'm not married. I know. I know. I, uh, I know you were. Um, yeah, 15 years, and we have a 14 year old kid too. Holy shit! Yeah, boy or girl? Boy. There you go, man. Thank goodness <laughs> for that too. You know, it's like you know, at least I mean, <laughs> all my boys that have fucking all my all my homies have been having having daughters lately, like yeah. their firstborn daughters. I'm like, you're fucked, Jack. Remember all the fucking stupid shit? Remember all the fucking stupid shit? Yeah. Like you're fucked. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, thankfully for me, my um, I, it's odd because my wife, this is a true story. My wife, when we first met, um, we met January of 06 and we got married that same year in September of 06, September 26, uh, 2006. And we, we've been with each other ever since. So when my wife and I were talking about having families, you know, we were thinking about, you know, years down the line, but obviously it happened very quickly. Right. So my, we were conversing. And she was like, uh, I want to name my, our firstborn angel. And it's going to be a boy. He's going to have dark hair, blue eyes. And I was like, you know, I, I'm Hispanic. And I was like, I don't have any yeah. family members that are yeah. uh, shit. Yeah. blue eyes. <laughs> like, I mean, my wife is Spaniard though. So it would probably come out of her. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so she was like, it's going to be a firstborn kid. I mean, our firstborn kid is going to be a boy. And we're going to name him Angel. And I was like, and it's going to, he's going to look like this. And I was like, 
if that were to happen, because I never liked the name Adrian, I, I, I always thought that was the dumbest name. And, and I love my right. son, but he knows how I feel about it. But I don't, I'm not part at all. So I told my wife, I said, if if that were to happen, we will go with you know Angel. If it's a girl, we're gonna go with Valentina. That was the name that I was gonna pick because I wanted a girl. Nice. So lo and behold, once my my wife uh, found out that you know you know we were that she was pregnant, we you know we. Uh, did the uh, the baby check and all that stuff, and we found out it's a boy. So she was like, "All right, well, well, if it looks the way you want to, then we'll go with that. Otherwise, it's not. I want the name to be Anthony and so on." So, anyways, so I had all these stipulations in there. She's like, "Nope, it's not going to change." Lo and fucking behold, uh, and, and the, the whole pregnancy was a whole different story for uh, for another time. But when he was born, he came out exactly the way she wanted: dark hair, yeah. blue eyes. And I was like, "What a fucking joke this is." <laughs> And I was the like, mother's oh. me. and I was like, all right, so, so she, we, you know, we named him Angel, and and so yeah, yeah, and he's, you know, and and she's always wanted one kid. I wanted more, and then now as time has gone by, I've stepped away from that. I don't want any more kids. I love kids. Don't I don't know how you guys do it, man. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know how y'all do it. You know what it's, I mean? Well, you, you know, my friend, it's so hard. It's got to be so hard raising a fucking child in this world, homie. Yeah, and maybe well, it's you know, not. It's it depends though. I because it's the fucking best. Yeah, it, it depends. It, I, I can tell you it wasn't easy, but it really just depends. I think it's just who, who you who you keep around you to help you with that. It also yeah. depends on how you handle yourself in those situations. I wasn't the smartest kid um, during those times either. But um, but yeah, you know, my son, you know, it, it, we have a lot in common, but not in like the things we have interest in as far as like movie. I mean, he likes movies, but not like me. He's more into right. video games and stuff like that. I can give two shits. Of course, about that. these motherfuckers. Yeah, these little motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did our elders look at us like that too? How old are you? I'm 36. I'm 42. You're 36. Okay. Yeah. So you're 36. I'm 42. We're kind of kind of close, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, can you imagine us? Like, how our elders looked at us? We gotta look at these guys now. You know what's too. funny? It's like these motherfuckers. You know what's like, funny though? My son was. Uh, I I don't keep up with a lot of new music these days. So yeah, I was actually talking with my my cousin. Um. She was uh, at the time she was visiting. Now she lives here in North Carolina because I live out in North Carolina. So we were conversing about something. We were talking about music. And she was asking me, you know that song WAP? And I had no idea what she was talking about. <laughs> I swear to God, I had no idea. And I was like, WAP. And I was like, yeah, there's a song called WAP. And I was like, is this a song about Italians? I, I'm not joking. I was like, this is a song about Italians or something? And she's like, no. And then she went up to my son, Angel, come over here. This is like about less than two years ago. She's like, Angel, come over here. She's like, do you know what WAP stands for? And my son's like, yeah, wet ass pussy. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then my, my my cousin, she's like, oh boy, you know, your son knows. Oh, yeah. like, God damn, I am it's, that it's father so now. Hard not to laugh as, a, as a parent, as a father and a parent, you it's gotta be so hard not to laugh when and you shouldn't be laughing. Or you know what I mean? Like, cause <laughs> I'd be laughing all the time. Oh, like, it's funny you, now. It says, man. Yeah. But you know what shocked me though is that at that moment, right then and there, I just I remember distinctly thinking. I am that fucking guy that I did not want to be where I was like out of the loop. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I, I uh, become that man. I was like, holy that's why the dad gets so hot. That, I, well, I wasn't like mattering. I was like, holy shit. I was like, because I mean, when I said, I, I cuss in front of my son all the time, but I was like, what the fuck? And then it wasn't because of what he knew. It was because I had no idea. And I was out of the loop and I was yeah. like, holy shit. Oh, dude. That's how I feel I, like any kind of, thing, like any of this technology shit, anything. Uh, I'm just like, dude, I'm like, I'm like, motherfucker, I use the first iPhone like you use the latest iPhone. That's the same shit. I text, <laughs> email, look at porn, and that's it. Like, I don't know what the fuck else I do with this goddamn thing. You know, it's like, what the fuck you do with these things? You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck what the camera's like, bro. Like, yeah. So. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's been, it's definitely been a journey when it comes to, you know, uh, raising my son. And, and there's a lot that I've learned about, you know, what not to do. Because, you know, like, I, I think for me oh, personally, sure. and I, and I, and I, yeah. I kind of liken it to, in a lot of ways, I kind of like into acting. Uh, I, I guess this is why I resonate so much with acting because I look at myself and I'm and I feel like I don't necessarily believe I have the same type of lifestyle, but it's that trajectory of like the ups and downs and the highs and lows, and then adapting and adjusting and whatnot. And that's kind of like how I look at parenting too, as same way as you look at a film set where your your career where you're just not going to have everything available. You got to make do with what you got, and that's kind of how parenting yours is. is real life. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I can't fuck up. You know, I can't yeah. take these risks. It's you know, it's crazy, bro. I can't just say, well, like, I, acting, I is the best. acting is just make believe. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. the best. Matter. So, yeah, there's a lot that I, 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 I've seen a lot of parallels to when it comes to that, because it's especially funny, because when I'm talking to you and I'm talking to a previous guest uh, about, you know, their lifestyle, I'm thinking, I, I reflect on these conversations that I have and I'll, I'll reflect on this one too. 
and there's always something that I take from it. And then I, and I always think I compare it to myself, like, what have I gone through that I can, that I connected with? Cause that's how, uh, that's how I personally think that I connected with them yeah. that made me understand where they're coming from. And then I think about why well, I remember I went through this in my life and that. So yeah. that's, that's kind of how I look at it for myself uh, when it comes to um, the conversations that I'm having, because there's something that I'm, I'm looking for. I, I've said it before and, I, and I'm sure whoever listens to this will, will probably get tired of me saying this, but I mean it every single time. I look for the underdogs that no one's ever heard of that I think people should be in the lookout for. And I hope that one day that- No wonder you like me. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's you're a good actor too, but you know, listening to you talk, I'm like, man, this is a really nice guy. And even the conversation we had during the text, like I, I picked it up right away. This guy is, has a really wonderful personality. And I picked it up on, from there. Uh, especially when you had said, uh, how the fuck you found that movie? Well, I'll never find, I'll never know. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's going to be a great that, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I always will be. <laughs> so I was always, um, uh, a fan of the underdogs and because I always feel like the people that know the hard work and I'm not saying the high caliber actors don't know, I'm not saying that, but something about the underdogs that people don't know of, I, I think have sometimes the, the most interesting stories that people tend to overlook that I, I really rather focus more on. And what I hope would happen, and I really mean this every single time I say it, is that one day in your in your life, a couple of years from now, 10 years or whatever the case may be, someone will come across this interview and say, hey, I, I came across an interview you've done X amount of years ago. And this guy was asking you all these questions about you and what you were thinking about the career and this and that. And this is what you said. And then either you'll remember or you may not remember, but I, I'm hoping that that point in your life, you're in a happy state or if maybe if you're not content, but maybe you might like that. I'm hoping this reminder will be like a boost of like uh, happiness that, that, that you that would hopefully help out where you look back and it's like, holy shit, I remember that time. And I was at this place at this time in my life. And here I am now. And I'm hoping that this would be a good way to reflect on that period of time in your life, because the conversation wasn't necessarily solely focused on. What was it like working with Brett? What was it like making this movie? How was it? No, it's, no. It's, who wants to talk about that shit? We gotta talk about. We gotta chop it up like some other way. Yeah, hundred right. percent. So if you can't fucking re not remember this, you're crazy. I'm 42 now, man. I'm on my way out. Like I got probably 30 good years left, maybe the way right. I live, probably not. But who cares? But yeah, of course I remember this shit. So I'm fine. You even like my shit? I can't even believe it. That fucking blows my mind. I'm like, someone needs to commit you. <laughs> Well, if they commit me, it's probably to the academy to say, "Hey, we got to. I got to vote uh, for an actor that I think you all should consider." That that's oh, bro, that's and it'll be like you know, just be like a repeat. It'll be like a Clockwork Orange of just my films, like playing like with your. <laughs> oh, eyes everyone focus. sit down in the in the auditorium like with their eyes. Yeah. Okay, is like, oh. all right? Like, what what haven't we shown again? Oh, let's play ninety people yeah. moment. Yeah, let's play that again. Come yeah. on, guys. Yeah, yeah. So, and they start putting the eyes. So getting back to Tom Holland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's well, so funny, man. <laughs> All right. Well, so, so wait, let's wrap it up again, man. So what, let's wrap it up. What do you want to do? Oh, so I was just saying, I was, that's exactly what I was going to get right now. So we're going to wrap it up here. And um, so I am just going to say that um, for anyone out there who, who's not familiar with you, I highly recommend they check out your films because one, I think you are a phenomenal actor, especially that movie Frog, which I hope does come to fruition, becoming a feature length film and that you're going to be a part of because I think what I've seen in that movie with what you've been able to do and along with Patricia and everyone else have done a fucking phenomenal job, in my opinion. So from here on out, I'm just going to go and sign off and then have you uh, just want to discuss a few things before uh, before you officially call it off. And then we'll just go from there. So I, I don't know if you want to say anything in closing for this recording here, as far as what you want people to be in a lookout for, for yourself or anything else you got coming down the pipeline. In closing, always carry a gas can when the car runs out of gas on the side of the road. Bro, that's it. <laughs> Love y'all. Fuck y'all. Love y'all. All right. <laughs>